All right, what is up, Storm Chasers? We are live, finally. You know, we, I actually, Essie, Essie was good. I had some equipment issues. My um, HDMI cord broke, believe it or not. So, you know, it happened. So we're going to make this work. Let me just take these off so y'all don't see those lights. Um, So we're going to make this work. But Miss Essie Berry, the civil rights activist, the one that was is and was being stalked by Steve Harvey. Yeah. The one that protected Mary Harvey for many, many years. Um, you a stone cold killer out on these streets. No, don't say that. That might kill a player. Not literally, not literally, not okay. literally. Okay, okay. Not literally. But behind the scenes, <laughs> Etsy has uh has helped me out a lot. She's a really good person, good people. And when I say if you need somebody by your side, call Essie. She don't play. She don't play. She she got gangsters and thugs that respect her. When the thugs respect you, <laughs> you better tell them, Storm. You better know it. Recognize I'm, the show. I'm just saying now. I know she says she a Libra, but sometimes I be feeling like she a Leo. But I'm gonna leave that alone. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> she got some fire sign in there somewhere, but somewhere that's that scale. You know, it's, it it goes off and on. It's that scale for sure. That's true. That's true. Welcome, so, everybody. Y'all, thank y'all so much for being patient, Wayne, because I love Storm to Death. And at least he bring you true facts when he bring it. And I don't do a ledge, you guys, so I'm putting that out there now. It's never what I say. It's always what I can prove. Point blank, period, simple. Amen. I love so let's that. let's get into this. He said I'm stone cold killing in the streets. That might be the YouTube streets. The YouTube streets. YouTube streets. <laughs> okay. So let's get, let's, let's get into it. Steve Harvey and Marjorie. Um, there have been many rumors that Marjorie is cheating on him. As we already know, Marjorie has never been one to, let's say, be stingy with her cootie cat. Um, she hopped from cousin to cousin, drug dealer to drug dealer. Um, she had kids, you know, she had niggas hearts. She had niggas money when they did time for her. And if it's one thing about Marjorie, Marjorie knows how to leverage her her je ne sais quoi, her, 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 her divine. Some people say divine feminine, divine slut, whatever you want to call it. Ooh. And 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 Lori Harvey, aka Lori Woods, today has just really taken the reins and and took the cake. You know, Lori Harvey ain't nothing but a slimmer version of her mama, slimmer. and you know, you know, slimmer version, and you know, definitely a little bit more bougie. One thing about Marjorie, she know how to run them streets and she she know how to do some kingpin type shit. And Lori ain't on that type of time. You know, she going to date an actor, you know, her mammy going to date a drug dealer. And it just it is what it is. But anyway, they say that Marjorie and Steve Harvey bodyguard, boom, been booming in the bed and banging down the footboard and the headboard and down. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> down to the shower, you know, down to the hot tub. They say why Steve over there, damn near working himself into a stroke and diabetes, you know, because, you know, they say he's sick as hell and he tired because he don't sleep. That's the thing. He literally don't sleep because, you know, at the end of the day, when you marry a woman that doesn't love you and never will love you, she will only love what's in your bank account. You got to pretty much work into your grave. Yeah. He says that his job as a man is to Take care of his wife, and I dare say the you best better go get with Mary because that's still technically your legal wife. But anyway, you better say it. Okay, you leave that right there. That's coming soon. Go I will say come. I will say a man's job is also to take care of his children and all his children, not just you know the ones that come from another man. You know the ones that came from his nuts, the ones that look like him. You know. These men got an issue with taking care of the kids that look like them. They love to take care of somebody else's kids. They ain't got no ties to. But anyway, that's what? enough of an introduction. Why is that? Because <laughs> they hate themselves. Mm, say it then, Storm. They hate they hate they hate they hate themselves. They hate themselves, you know. So they they love to he loves to say, Oh, you know, Lori's my daughter, and what's the other one? Justin, that's my son. And he them them ain't them ain't your kids. No. And if you go all the way back to 2013, when I first came in this whole situation, start back in 2013, you ain't seen nothing about Steve. You ain't seen nothing about his kids. 
he was still going through custody battles with Marsha at that time. They just really settled in 2013 when all this came out. So yes. he had to make himself look like a big family because this was coming out about Mary. He was trying to get that family feud gig. So at that time, when he was trying to get all that, he didn't need no hiccups in the road anywhere. He wanted to make himself look like someone he was not, period. But but wouldn't you agree that Steve has always tried to make himself something that he wasn't? You know what? I do agree with that. And let me tell you why. I agree with that because we still go back to how I know Steve Harvey was a born face liar is because he said I was extortionist and a co-conspirator. And he had no tangible evidence. None of these bloggers ever said, Steve, what did Essex store? What, what was tangible that she took from you? How was there a conspiracy? If you will lie on a person that you don't know, then how will you not lie on somebody that you do know? This man knew nothing of me and went to the papers and ran, and everybody believed it. That's what you guys got to stop thinking. Because the person is on TV, that don't mean they don't make decisions and bad choices and mistakes. But a mistake is when you drop a peanut butter and jelly sandwich down on the floor. You heard me? A decision is when you go sleep with the next broad or the next dude, and you okay with it. Those two separate different things, for sure. Two totally different things. you know. It's 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 a mistake to get the wrong kind of rice aroni. It's not a mistake when you uh make your son strip naked and then you beat him and oil him down. I'm just saying the Joe Jackson of it all. The Joe Jackson of it all. And I'm gonna be on when he said something about that. The child abuse that went to suffer at nine years old. It happened in Atlanta, Georgia. Mary found out about it and took her baby to the hospital. Even though Wimp is grown, Steve should have never been able to get away with child abuse. Point blank, period, simple. And I can name three judges that were paid off. Judge Dry was the one who was paid off to close this. And then here comes Judge Angela Tucker. And there's another judge in Los Angeles when I went up against Steve Harvey. There are three judges, no, four judges. And the one who paid, Steve Harvey paid to take the restraining order off of him. Steve Harvey had a restraining order on him, ordered for me for three years. He went back in six months and he took it off. He got his lawyers to take it off. I felt like he paid the judge. If you want to sue me, I'm waiting for that too. But it is what it is. And I said what is true. So I know for a fact that he's paid off four judges as well. So even when Storm just said that about the child abuse, there's an actual document that exists saying that that child abuse happened, point blank. And we showed it here on the show. And it, yep. it is, of course, available on Patreon and for our YouTube members. Listen, we show it. If it wasn't for YouTube guidelines, I'd have had that paper uh, right here in my hand. But they make you blur it because, you know, you got people's names and birth dates and addresses and all kinds of stuff. But I will just say and I want to say this before we start getting into the evidence and this timeline of all of the cheatation and the OT and the old audios that Essie Berry has single handedly been the best guest ever on this platform. Awesome. And I'm going to tell y'all why. I'm going to tell y'all why. Not only is she entertaining, that just makes it, that, that's the icing on the cake. That's the icing on the cake. Everything she said, she had proof to back it up. Even if it was Mary said. <laughs> I got it. You heard me? By the way, shout out to Mary. In that fake ass hospital bed you laying in right now. We know you're laying in that hospital bed. No, sir. You know we what? Know, we know you laying up right now. Uh, is she, is she laying up with that electrician <laughs> still? Who, who, she, who she fucking not? She watching. She watching. For sure. She watching. She, I don't think he with her no more, though. No, nah, he ain't with the, she ain't with the electrician no more. Mm -hmm. this he is she called me. Me, she called me she said this is mary harvey <laughs> you better hold your neck up when you call mary name you better mary mary oh, oh, harvey keep it up <laughs> and that 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 aura that persona that's really who mary is that persona is who she is they say she went down oh, to the urgent care. I'm so sorry about that. Well, she went to urgent care before she watched me and Storm on, on the internet. That was before we even said something. So hopefully she didn't watch it afterwards and stayed at urgent care because she said she was on the way. And I hope she's doing good. No harm, no foul to Mary. At the end of the day, let me keep this 100. 
regardless of what Mary has ever done to me, if something were to come up about this case, I'm in that case, their divorce case, which I should not be in. Hell yeah, I'm gonna step back into the ring because at the end of the day, I'm a civil rights activist. I can't yes. go on somebody's emotions. I gotta go on the facts. And the facts is, Steve Harvey did what he did and he's still blackmailing me to this day. There's a warrant for my arrest in a state I've never been in. Tell me how that's factual because he thought he could pump me like he did Mary, like he did Marsha, and probably how he doing Margie too. I'm EB. I ain't no Eminem. You can't do that to me. Point blank, period, simple. Point blank, period. Point blank, period, simple. And, and I will say this. It's crazy to put a warrant on you in a state that you've never been in because it's like, I don't know. Like, what do you think? Like, if I was him, what, what are you accomplishing by doing that? You accomplish because most people are cowards. Most people are scared. I ain't scared to go to jail. Hell, I've been to jail before. I ain't playing with nobody. What we doing? Y'all sit up and act like you ain't never been no more. I've been to jail before, so it ain't that. He thought he could scare me and throw me in jail like Mary, and I wasn't going to say anything. I'll put all your shit out here on the streets if you think that you could have put me in jail and lie on me about something I didn't do. Steve Harvey's a born natural liar. He said if his social security number was tattooed on his butt, he would still say it ain't him. I Dang. know for a fact that he's a liar because I never extorted nothing. I never conspired nothing. Where did that lie come from? And all this time, people be like, I don't believe it. You don't want to believe it because it's a lie. You would rather believe a lie than believe the truth. So most of y'all will do that because you see them on TV because you see them booted up money and all this other shit. But behind closed doors, they're ruthless. And I'm not going to quit until he acknowledges what he has done. And he really don't have to now. Losing all his stuff. I mean, that's what he good at because he'll lie or he'll go and do something then come and lie about it. And another thing, that tweet, whatever that tweet was that went out and Steve Harvey said his assistant did it, Steve did that. Steve won't let nobody handle his stuff for him. Mary said they used to be in the background doing tweets, getting this and doing this. They do that shit for themselves. He ain't going to let nobody handle his accounts because he got some grimy stuff in his accounts. And I'm going to show oh. you sooner or later. So you so you saying that was Steve that said who's who's your favorite unfunny like who's your favorite comedian or whatever? Steve did. That. Steve did. That. So so what so 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 what? Somebody just sat on Steve's computer and say, well, who y'all think is the funniest? Hell, somebody could did that on YouTube. Steve did that because he was feeling some kind of way. You know what I'm saying? Because you know he ain't funny. He a host. I he funny. He make a better host than a comedian. I mean, it, it, for me, it was the nerve. It was like wow, the audacity. Yeah, because he thought he thought he the response he got, he didn't think he was gonna get that response. He thought he was gonna have a different type of response. It didn't go like he thought. Mm -mm -mm. Let's now, get well, let's get let's get into Marjorie here. Mar oh, oh, oh no, there we go. Oh, what's that ad? Okay, put that down. Okay, so Miss Marjorie Harvey, she said, My husband and I, Marjorie, that ain't your husband, that's Mary's Mary. husband. Say it, Mary husband's Marjorie. So Marjorie, oh, Marjorie, Marjorie said, "My husband and I don't usually stop to address the foolishness, but so much has been spread about us. However, to whom much is given, much is required." Let's stop right there. However, to whom much can sign over in her name. And my husband don't address issues like this. Well, why you address this one? Because you know it was damn true. That's why you address it, because you know it was true. Carry she on. Said, she said, I understand that with my platform comes some sort of responsibility to those that may not be as strong as we are. Read and share this with your loved ones that may not know how to properly cope. God bless all of you. Now, now, now why she got to bring God into this? <laughs> Because <laughs> we know Marjorie, your God ain't my God. Who your God? Lucifer? And ain't nobody trying to throw shade, but be real about it. In 2013, when I met Mary, Mary said Steve and um, Margie was living in different bedrooms. Went and told Mary that himself that Margie and Steve, they were in two separate bedrooms. But let's go all the way back, Storm. How far are we going to go back before we get to Boom? We're going to go to the mattress first. We're going to do that first. Oh, no, we should do Boom first because from what I understand, Boom was a pimp. 
March that's was true. a dope game, right? So that's uh, true. Well, know somebody in a dope game. So did did he go get dope from them to get to his hoes? Or how did that go that you end up sleeping with Margie? Because whether it happened today or yesterday, but it did happen that Boom and Margie had a relationship. I don't know if it was just sexual, but they slept together. Now, if they filmed it, I saw what somebody said the videotapes came out. I can't 100% acknowledge that, but I know he slept with her back before she got with Steve. So how did that occur within that part of it? So maybe they taped the tapes because they said they were VHS tapes because you know YouTube, all this other shit ain't out right now. So they probably did it on VHS tape. Steve tape himself doing sexual things. We'll get into that shortly. We'll get into that shortly. I wanted to take it back to this National Enquirer article that says Steve's top bodyguard is an ex-pimp. Now, if you guys look at this picture here, this, of course, looks like it's from the uh, Kings of Comedy era. But maybe it's not. Steve. I don't know what year this is from. Steve looks kind of young. It looks younger, though. Yeah. But that's Boom right there on the far right. Boom. There go, 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 boom. There go Boom right there. That's a big dude, y'all. That's a big nigga. Big Boom. His book that he wrote in 2007. It's called, If You Want Closure in Your Relationship, Start With Your Legs. Now, how was an ex-pimp going to tell people to close their legs? Really? Is that like, really? What how is an ex-pimp who, who wouldn't have been who he was if he didn't have holes all up and down La Cienega Boulevard spreading their legs? Going to tell y'all to close your legs. closing your legs. Let, let, let me say this, too. This, this, you know, you want to know what's funny? Nin ninjas, I ain't gonna say the N word. Ninjas have been trying to give women advice since the beginning of time, it seems like, but ain't got their own shit together. Who was going to Big Boom for advice? Who let him wrote the book? That's I what I want to know. Who I published believe. this book? An ex pimp gonna say, Keep your legs closed. Is that a new method to the pimp game, or is that a new method to the pimp and whole game? I'm just asking. Close starts with your legs. Start with your legs doing what? We we don't know what he said in the book. We probably assume, but that's just a persona. So a pimp turned into a, a house mac. Okay. You going to give people advice like Steve did? Yeah, okay. Because that's what I'm trying to figure out. Because I'm like, who, who would have went to Big Boom for some damn advice? Was he trying to copy Tariq Nasheed? Was he trying to follow that? I don't know where he was going with this back in the day. But anyway. Anywho, that was back in 2007. And then this is from 2015 when Big Boom strong armed Winton and pulled him out of school in Florida. Now, let me say something as big as Boom is, Winton didn't stand a damn chance. Right. And Margie was in on that. She made Boom snatch Winton's phone and say, Break that motherfucker, break that motherfucker. Mary was on the phone when that happened and Winton had called his mom. They were upset. This happened. Let me tell y'all why this happened. This happened because Winter had started trying to build a relationship with Mary in 2015. So when she tried, he started building a relationship with Mary in 2015. They was monitoring his cell phone. They found out that Winter was contacting Mary. They sent Boom on the college campus. Margie was on the phone too at the time telling Boom on the phone, take that motherfucker phone. They took Winter phone and they crashed it and they threw it down and broke it. And the mm -hmm. police showed up on the spot and everything. There's a full police report to all that. So it kind of messed me up to see how Margie will let Boom handle her ki hit, um, Steve kid, but you're not going to handle Lori like that. But it's okay for you to send that big nigga up on Steve kid and, and Mary child, but you wouldn't let Lori do that. And have y'all noticed that y'all ain't never seen Steve give none of his kids no cars, a wedding, mm. a wedding is something you forget about. He bought um, Lori a Rolls Royce. Well, well, why you ain't brought the twins Rolls Royces? I'm sure little Stephen want one too. And hell, what about Winton? He's a persona man. You guys get that illusion out your head because he's Steve Harvey. He ain't human. He crooked as hell. Point blank, period, and simple. And let's not even forget how Lori came out the club drunk as shit, flipped her G-Wagon over, called her big-lifted fake-ass daddy, and he replaced her G-Wagon. 
but you ain't even bought a G-Wagon for your own twins that look just like your wide, crooked smile ass. And then want to buy one for Winton because he knew that Winton was going to go try to be where Mary was at. So still to this day, Steve monitors Mary and Winton relationship. I saw a video where Steve said, me and Mary are friends. You know damn well you and Mary ain't friends because of all the stuff that he did, including taking her child. And he still keeps them apart. That what he just showed you happened in 2015 once when Boom strong armed it um the baby yep. when, when it did that that happened in 2015 um, no 2017 or was it 2015? 2015 2015 okay so it happened in 2015 two years later 2017 i became mary's poa and that's when all the hell broke loose and they tried to gag me too steve probably tried to put a gag on me and still trying right now i guess he tried to put a gag on me to shut up so the things i'm telling you that he violated he don't want nobody to know the truth I don't know why, but he don't. Because see, he won't set you free. But, but one thing about I was I was just about to say that the truth will set you free, but first it'll piss you off. But you know what? Yeah. You can't run from your past. You can't. Right, right. right. You, you just can't. So let's actually get into this right here. So boom. Marjorie cheated in the beginning. I'm gonna read it for everybody. Okay, y'all. Let's go. Exclusive. Steve Harvey kicked his brother, Terry Harvey, out from residing at the Family Feud's host Atlanta mansion. Want to know why? Because Steve caught his wife, Marjorie, and his brother, Terry, smashing in the bed. A source has said that Steve made his wife, Marjorie, sell their $8,000 mattress. Now, what kind of mattress is $8,000? That, that mattress better be made out of Egyptian cotton. I'm just saying that she was caught committing adultery on and the family feud host stopped wearing his wedding ring in October 2008. The source went on to say Steve Harvey was done with Marjorie when he found out she was pregnant from either his brother Terry or one of his family members and friends that came to the mansion while he was on tour. I didn't know she had got pregnant with a baby. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness! Uh huh. Was that your sacrifice? What they talking about sacrifices? Cause she didn't keep the baby. And Steve, you didn't read that storm? I didn't know that. Wait a minute. 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 How wait old? a minute. Two thousand eight. That was written. How old is Marjorie? Like, how? But she's uh fifty eight. She fifty eight. So that was what. That was 15 years ago, so she would have been 43. Okay, well, she was still childbearing age. Damn, she was pregnant with and was so low down, they all smash and raw. Y'all just all nasty. Um, that was an article because they y'all know how they say they scrub it. I think I found on Lipstick Alley, and there was one other place I found that on. It happened in 2008. Steve was on his um radio show talking about it. Um, and they tried to really blow it off. And for a minute, they that's why they were sleeping in separate rooms because of that. Mm -hmm. But listen, they got so much on each other. If she tell, he lose. If he tell, she loses. So they both going to be in trouble when all this stuff really hits the fan. Because everything Steve has done, Margie know about it. Point blank, period, simple. Point blank, period. Let me, let, well, I do want to ask this. And shout out to Marjorie Harvey. I just want to ask a, a more. Hey, you know, I just want to ask a, a, a question, and I don't mean no disrespect, Miss. I'm gonna call you. I'm gonna call you. You ain't the real Mrs. Harvey, so I'm gonna call you Miss Marjorie because you're grown, okay? And I respect my elders. But let me ask you, Miss Marjorie, who was better, Steve or Terry in the bed? Steve, Terry, or Boom? Who cracked that back the best? Mary said, "I don't know what to <laughs> say." Mary said she's a gold digging whore. I'm saying I got that on tape too. She, and she may be a gold digging whore, but even gold digging whores like orgasm. So I want to know who was best, Terry, Steve, or Boom? And Boom looked like he really put it down. So who had you screaming the loudest? Who had you squirting and creaming all over that eight thousand dollar mattress? That had you squirting so bad and had to smell like piss so much that Steve would have rather thrown it out than to have the maids clean it up. He didn't throw it out. He told her to sell it. He said, sell oh, it. Oh, sell it. Sell it. This is my thing, though. 
So, so you're going to sell the mattress. Okay. Mm, $8,000. So you can't get the stains off her coochie, but you're going to sell the mattress? Nigga, right. Like, how does that make sense? You're going to keep the mattress and sell it, but you're going to keep margin. She still got stains on the coochie from your brother. Okay. I mean, is that what we're doing? Hey, y'all like it? I love it. I'm just saying. <laughs> and the thing is, you can't wash stuff off the internet when it's on the internet. That's you very true. It. You can't do it. That's very true. Uh, okay, the source known to say Steve Harvey was done when he found out Mary was pregnant. Uh, the the drop. Don't Steve... say Mary. Margie was pregnant. Oh, Margie, Margie. Yeah. Uh, the drop. Steve never claimed the baby Margie was carrying between 2008 to 2009. Steve mm -hmm. decided to keep Margie to protect his image that skyrocketed from "Act Like a Lady, Think Like a Man" book that his illiterate ass didn't write, and we already know he he don't even know good English. But y'all think he wrote a book? Um, that came out in December 2008. Steve's books were about Marjorie being a perfect, beautiful, and faithful wife. Well, she is attractive. I will give her that, but she's not faithful nor perfect. As a matter of fact, she's a she's a green-eyed felon, if we want to be honest. Well, you know, criminal. I won't say felon. Marjorie never believed Steve's books were going to hit big. She told him he was dumb like his <laughs> she told him he was dumb like his bodyguard boom to ever write a book on relationships. Marjorie used to laugh at Steve, but one day Oprah called Steve to be on her show, and that's when Marjorie saw dollar signs and became the perfect wife. So Marjorie didn't even get her act together until she saw dollar signs. Correct. Correct. Okay, so I saw somebody say that poor soul, they stole somebody that mattress for $8,000. That nigga, that, that mattress should have vibrated. It should have moved. It should have cleaned on its own. It should have stood when you say $8,000. Well, okay. He wanted her to sell it, but I'll still keep the one with the stained coochie. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, and no, that was not Terry Smith. We're going to get around to Terry Smith, too. We're just showing a pattern here because let me show what I did find out. I listen to people talk about Mar uh, Margie and Steve right when they met. I think they said in 87, he was married to Marsha in 81. So he was messing with that from 87 all the way up to now. They didn't stop messing with each other because in 2003, when the other mistress, Terry Smith, wrote about it in her book, she said that she met Margie. So Steve had been messing with Margie for a long time. Marjorie had always been in the picture. Marjorie had always been the woman that he really wanted by his side, but he didn't have his money up. See, she didn't want his ugly ass or she, when he was on the side of the road. She didn't want him when he could barely afford a catfish dinner. You know what I'm saying? Get Getting all them grits in between them teeth that he didn't really want to floss out. She didn't love him when he was on stage with all that spit in his mustache. She didn't want him when he had to wash his ass in the Beverly Hills Hotel and he cried on the toilet stool with soap running all up in his eyes and running down the back in the crack of his ass. She didn't want him then. She wanted. She didn't want him until she saw the real dollar signs when he had worked himself to the bone just to afford the green-eyed criminal. You better say it now. Isn't am I ro am I roasting them too bad? Let me know if I'm roasting them too bad. You roasted them. I didn't know that was a roast. You you was gentle. You that you yeah. did so good. I I I really enjoyed how you broke it down from the catfish dinner to the mustache thing. You know what I'm saying? She didn't want you then with that hole in there. She wanted when you came back with all them dollars. You know what it's about. And he knew that. He knew that. Mary knew that. Everybody knew it. But I wait a minute. That. Wait a minute. Why would somebody post this? I just tested positive for chlamydia. What do I do now? Are you for real? Go get a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Go get a shot. Or did this make you just kind of get chlamydia? What is he talking about? Oh, because that means because two or three partners. That's what comes from chlamydia when you sleep with two or three different partners like that. Yeah. And I mean, I ain't mad that you can get your coochie who you want to get to, you know. But the brother, could you find somebody else? And I did talk to the brother's wife. Now, I'm mm. not going to criminate her because I don't want her to stop paying Steve bills. I mean, Steve to stop paying his sister bills, his brother bills. But after that happened, he got the out of Steve's house and Steve started paying their bills in their house. So she didn't want me to let nobody know. 
that she had talked to me about the situation when all that transpired because they signed some type of what you call it when you ain't supposed to talk about it. NDA. Like, yeah, they they had to sign something, and because of that, Steve paying all their bills. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now I ain't gonna call the wife name because she was very nice to me, so I wasn't trying to disrespect her. I just want to know what was the truth and what was a lie. So all that that happened, they won't even knew it happened if Steve had said it on his radio show. I may have a clip of that somewhere too. Someone sent it to me. People sent me a lot of stuff to to show me the truth and who Steve was. I never knew who he was until I found out how he did marry and we were getting ready to do the rally show. I looked at him just like y'all looked at him, like an upstanding dude. He all good, but he's a criminal behind closed doors. He's a monster. He's a child abuser and he's a liar. And he had a letter for a court and it said, Mary said, Mary said that I am not a child abuser, that I am not a woman abuser, and that I am writing this free of my will. That was in some court documents. When I saw a writing free of my will, I knew he made her write that. That's how I knew it was child abuse, and that's how I knew what he was doing to Mary. Because who's going to write something like that and put in a letter? As an activist, I look at everything. The little things that you wouldn't look at, I look at them. You do. You do. And and speaking of Mary, I want us to actually get into some old audio. So let's Ooh, actually let's get it fired up in here. Let's, let's get them fired up. up. Let's get them fired up. So let's do it. Did you feel bad, though, when you found out about. So when did you. OK, so Steve kept lying. So when did you really find out the truth about his son?
All right. So that's an old audio of NC Berry and Mary Harvey discussing about how allegedly Mary didn't know nothing about Marsha, the first wife, and that he was already married. He was still married when he got with Mary. But I, I played that audio not to be messy, although I am a messy individual. That, I played it. Okay. I pl you know, I played it because I wanted to show y'all that Steve has never been honest. So when he came out this week or last week or whatever and said, don't worry about me and Marjorie, we fine. First off, that ain't no way to address no rumors. I would have said my wife is not cheating on me, nor has she ever cheated on me. But them words didn't come out of his mouth. He said, we fine. Well, hell, a train could be getting ran on your wife and you can be cool with it. That's not answering our questions or concerns. And because you went on CNN and all these other outlets saying that it's fine, I can show you two pictures where Mary and Steve was arguing nights nice when they went to the award shows. Because something say something is fine, he don't like his image to be tarnished. He's a, um, what you call that when you like, you you a prideful person? Steve very prideful. So he don't like anybody knowing any garbage on him. He'll swallow shit in order to get what he needs to get. In order, you know what I'm saying? He'll take shit that he shouldn't take. And, wow. and this is the result. I'm just telling you. So he's that type of brother. You got to realize 10 years I've been going back and forth with Steve Harvey, this whole thing. And I do not think I would be involved in it if there was not a warrant for my arrest. I don't think I would have been involved in it if there was, you know, some type of way that that wasn't on me. But to know that he put a warrant for my arrest or me to shut up. I am 53 years old. I don't know how to shut or up. So you're not going to silence me. I would rather go to jail, go to court, and prove my truth than do you sitting up here blackmailing me and stuff. So that was a good analysis what Storm just showed. It shows that he will lie, even though at the end of you should have played the end. At the end of he was still lying to Mary, saying, oh, it wasn't me. Oh, it ain't me. It ain't me. And he was caught red-handed, and he continued to lie. Point blank, very simple. And Mary, you know, no disrespect, but it, it ain't no way around it. Mary was in the first wife court papers and they were moving property and stuff. And Steve had Mary moving property. So sometimes you get your karma. I hate it happened to Mary, but she did Steve's first wife like that. So Margie did Mary. That's the actual truth and all of it. So who really got duped in it? The first wife. If you really want to know 100% the truth, the first wife, Marsha. Now speaking speaking of uh speaking of, of of relationships, you know, the audience know how I get down, Essie. You know, you 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 know too. We've talked about it. And so I know a lot of married people that do a lot of things and they fine with it. But you know what else I know? I know that a lot of men out here are a lot freakier than what y'all want to know. I told y'all it's way more bisexual men out here than y'all want to realize and that y'all told me to shut the fuck up and that I was crazy. Okay. I'm just letting you know. If you want me to tell you, cool. If you don't want to uh, 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 realize it, fine. It, yeah, but it is what it is. And if you are bisexual, own it. If you're a hoe, you know you're a hoe, own it. If you're a liar, you know you're a liar, own it. I got a big mouth. I know I got a big mouth. I own that. You get what I'm saying? But I will tell the truth. I stand by what I stand by. And if your separate preference is women and men, okay, that's you. But don't lie about it. And Steve been lying for years about his sexual preference. Uh-oh. What this? Uh-oh. This is an audio right here. We're going to talk about the ding-a-ling. The ding-a-ling. ding a ling 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 ding 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 Dungeon. Let's go. ding a ling dungeon. Let's go. Own it. That's right. Own it.
So the Vaseline. It was, a, it was a computer. You know, like you do at a hotel. Yes. Okay, so what I'm saying is, so it was the six thousand dollars. One no pencils or nothing. Yeah, no paper clips, nothing. So what was that? His little sexual dungeon? Yeah, it was. Wow, I would have tried to gas your ass too. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, the Dingaling Dungeon. If y'all know Mary told me that, how much more do you think Mary told me why he been trying to gag her? That's enough to gag her. Not want people to know that you like men too. I mean, you use Vaseline. You had to have a big jar too. You see what I'm saying? And you got that in your house like that. Those are the things that people that Steve didn't want people to know. I mean, now, now, now my thing is he had he is he had a computer full of men. So, ladies, how would you feel? If you went on your man's computer and he had, well, that's gay. That's gay porn. Gay porn. That's what it is. Somebody said, I hate Vaseline. Okay. I like it. I like Vaseline. They would. I mean, shit. Freeze your or whatever. Not, so, not, the, not, the, not the masturbate with. That's some old country shit. Like, at least that's some lotion. Good lord. So, what was he doing with the Vaseline in his drawer? And what was the $6,000 wine for, Storm? Mary said. Mary oh, said. Mary said that. <laughs> And why I, I started taping Mary? Because she was scared to tell her truth. I don't like that you can't tell your truth. I don't like that men do shit and you try to silence women. Black women voices have been silent since the beginning of time. We tired of being silenced. We tired of you lying and acting this one way and it's another. I'm not going through that. Steve ain't my man. I don't have to protect him. Mary said it. And if you try to bring me up in court, you're going to go get Mary. You're going to go get her son. And I also made a statement where Mary said that he tried to molest her oldest son. And Stephen said it too. Mary has a son named Stephen. She said Steve was just like a sexual predator. She couldn't give him enough sex in the time of day that he wanted because he always wanted more and more. And she said that led to men. Mary said it. Mary said it. Mary said. <laughs> and he is a narcissist. He is a narcissist. Look, you guys, the, the point, like what Storm just did, like I noticed that these people in Hollywood, they don't want to own up to who they are. I'm a Southern woman. The stuff they be pulling, I'm not even sure why they be lying on themselves. If you do that kind of shit, just own it because it's going to come out one way or another. These Hollywood people already got films and tapes of everything that you do already. So they already got your number when they tired of you. I noticed, though, when they tired of you, they come at you 20 times four. And the, 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 the media will only project what they want you to see, just like with Cheryl Strawberry. Look how that just died down. Ask who paid the bond. I'm sure Steve gave Cheryl Strawberry the money to get her bestiality pedophile husband out of prison, out, out of jail. So how is that going to play out? Is Steve going to pay that, that judge off too? Now, I know four judges that Steve Harvey has paid off. How many judges have Steve Harvey really paid off? I know four, and I'm a victim of two of them myself. So come on now. I'm just saying. That's why you want to gag somebody, because you know all this dirt behind closed doors. And, and Winton know it all. That's why Winton can't be with Mary, because with Mary know, I mean, Steve know that Mary's going to question her son, Winton. And if Mary questioned Winton, Winton, there you go, he probably a break. That's his mother. And Margie ain't no better. She allowed that to happen. He kept having Winton away from his mother. Why? That's a lowdown trick. And But you got your daughter, Lori, right? Don't nobody want to hear that. And I would be looking crazy at Steve, too. The twins, all Steve's children have a right to look at him like he cross-eyed. Because whether he got money or not, he pretty much was a deadbeat daddy to him. Point blank, period, simple. Point blank. Let me ask you, didn't you uh, upload that video of, of Mary telling you what, what, Steven, what Steve did to Steven? Yes. Sure did. Hold up, we finna we we finna look for this right now. Hold up, let's scroll. In the let's garage, scroll. if not, I can go another room and see if I can send it right to you. What did Steve Harvey tell someone to tell about the dark secrets in the garage? Okay. Oh, we finna get into it, baby. Now look, Mary said it, so y'all can come. Never wanted like say, Mama, just go. Just Steve, and Steven never wanted like say, Mama, just go tell he gay. Mama, did he ever? Stephen wanted to do it. He wanted to tell it. He told me. He said, Ma, tell it. That's what Winston said. He said, Ma, tell it. 
Went to told you that too? No, 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 not went to. Oh, no, Stephen. I'm talking about Stephen. That is, you said maybe. I'm talking about Stephen. Okay, so how long before Steve? So when did Stephen know Steve was gay? Uh, down the dial low. Uh, when, he, when he went into the um, uh, the garage. He didn't know. Well, wait, he didn't know until this dude came in there. Well, the garage situation. He, did, he knew then, he was like, dude, get out of my face in the back. Go on somewhere. Cut the light on, put your shirt back on. Get, on. <laughs> <laughs> Man, get out of my face. Hey, Steve, like, keep it on the dial, though. Well, hey. Man, that's, why, that's why he went crazy on Stephen. After Stephen went saying, hey, I'm not talking to my mom if you're not divorcing you. That's why he went crazy on Stephen, you know? So that was after, after the fact. That was after he tried that mess in the garage. Okay. Oh, so he was mad that he couldn't get the booty, and now he wanted you to persuade him to stay with you so he can be a predator towards your son. Something, yeah. So anyway, when I let me see how long. I think it was like a maybe, maybe a year after that, when Steve and I moved into our big house. And me and went to me and Dinah and uh Steven went over there on Steve's computer. That's when we saw that mess. All the men on that computer and that Vaseline. Damn, you think he would probably think? I have to be sad, man. I have to be sad. And you know what? You know what? It's, it's like a person's on drugs. All right. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna I'm let you talk while I look for the other clip too. Well, you just said that. I I did, at the end of that video, I didn't play it because Mary talked about Steve being a real bad sexual predator, and she talked about how he went on Wednesday. So I cut that there. But there's another part to that audio. When I listen to that and I think about all the things Mary told me, y'all as women, think about that was your kid. I always put myself in Mary's place. No matter what she has done and no matter how I feel, she's still human. And I got placed in the middle of this case for some reason. To know that this woman told me that this man tried to violate her son and you're going to try to gag me or you're going to try to shut me up. What was the purpose in that? What would she lie for? If someone tried to come get me right now because I'm on Storm Platform, you got to go get Mary. And you would have to go get Steven. And, and that was Mary Boyce. And I was asking those questions at the time because I wanted to know. So after I found out how they kept blackmailing Mary and trying to stalk her and scare her, I began to start taping everything that she did. Point blank, very simple. And, and I love that you did that. I love that you did that because I now I felt like she was because Steve had so much money. He scared her so many times. She was scared to tell the truth, y'all. Period. She was. She was. Now I will say, I still feel like Steve would have wished he would have married somebody like you because you would have got you would have but you would have got him together and you would have kept Steve in line. You know what? That's funny you said that, Storm, because Mary said that Steve will marry a Libra, but he'll fuck anybody. That's what Mary said. Okay. Wow. Awful. Mary, Margie, Mar all them are Libras. I'm a Libra too. You see what I'm saying? But he wouldn't have did this grimy shit. He could have did my son like that. He could not did Mary's son like that. He could, I, When I met Rerun, I told Rerun, you got to go get all your children. I need to meet all your children. He could have never done Marsha kids like that. He could not have rolled with this lie that long, knowing that you lied on an innocent woman like me. So, but like, Steve, I look, I don't want to say Steve's a horrible person because I see some good qualities in him, but he stuck his foot so far into this and did not know the capability of me because sometimes people hear me. They say, oh, she talk fast. Okay, she's country. Okay, she this. Yeah, but I whooped that ass. I was able to do things that other people wouldn't do. And I was still able to stand up for what I believe in because if my voice goes silent, all black women's voices go silent. That's what I feel now. I felt like when he was silencing Mary, he was silencing me too. To put me in a court case as CEO, that's illegal. One way or another, somebody's going to end up investigating Steve Harvey. Point blank, period, simple. And ain't nothing he can do about it because it, it's his karma coming back. He could have made this right a long time ago. He thinks he's elevating, but he's really not elevating. He's actually destroying himself. And Margie has helped him because if Margie had been any type of woman, she would have shut all this down a long time ago. She sure, would, she sure would have. But you know what? It's, it's one thing It's one thing I am going to agree. Well, I, I'm going to say when it comes to Steve. Now, I'm going to say when it comes to Storm now. I will marry a earth sign or a water sign. And what's but, that? But anybody can get it. But I will only marry ever. Okay, so earth, what's the earth signs and the water sign? What's those two signs? So the earth signs are Taurus, 
Virgo and what's in Capricorn. And the water signs is Pisces, Cancer, and I forgot the other one. I think Scorpio. Okay, y'all heard that now. Y'all can get it though. But he ain't marrying you if you come your way. He just told you what he married with six of. You ain't got that. You can't marry him, but you can get it though. Yeah. 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 Anybody can get it. But I will only ever tie myself to an earth sign or a water sign. That's Why is it. That? Huh? Why is that? Oh, I got a bunch of fire signs in my family, and they crazy as hell. So that's enough for me to know. Gotcha. Huh. I'm yeah. good. No, no shade to the fire signs. God bless y'all. But right. I got a bunch of them in my family and they crazy. Love them, but they crazy. Well, I have to say too, Mary said out of every woman she knew, including herself, I was the only person that ever stood up to Steve Harvey, like as a woman, because he liked to like, like devour women. He liked to disrespect women. He liked to talk real disrespectful to women. And he thought he could do that to every woman that he meet. He couldn't do that to me at all. Mm -hmm. And really somewhere along the line, people, I believe in karma now. I didn't have to do nothing else. God did everything for me. Just like put me on this platform. People calling me, me, me. Because people know I ain't lying. And ask yourself one thing. I said that this man molest, tried to molest Mary's son. Mary said it. Mary I said, said it. what I said the way I said it. Why Steve ain't sued me? Why y'all didn't go back and ask him, what? How, how did you and Essie bury me? It would almost be like me and Steve got a love-hate relationship now. And why? Because he never saw my face but on this, this internet when I'm dragging him. Yep. What would I gain by doing what I've done, you guys? What would I benefit by trying to destroy Steve Harvey in any type of way? I don't benefit anything. All I benefited was my credibility trying to tell the truth. But when you keep on lying and lying and lying, it's best for you to come out with the truth just as well. Storm showed you the, the technicalities of how Steve be cheating and stuff. So we're going to talk about Terry Smith, too. Terry Smith was a mistress that was eight years in a relationship with Steve Harvey. She wrote a book, Men Will Lie When the Truth Will Do. Go on Geneva Closet page. She got all four of it. She didn't read the whole book. How Geneva found out about that was I was telling her about Terry Smith. She started searching and researching some stuff. I said, girl, I said, they got the book. Men will lie when the truth will do on Amazon. The only book, you guys, tell me what God won't do. The only book on Amazon. I go to bed the next morning. Geneva said, girl, I got the book. I was like, you lying. Geneva was waiting for the book to come. So mm. that way, God knew that book was going to be in my hands. And he treated her so grimy, so disrespectful. So I think I sent you a letter on that woman. Do you have that love affair? I, I, I do. And before we get to that letter, I just want to play this quick video of okay. Mary saying, because I just thought this was hilarious. The bunk beds. Hold on. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Okay, go. And. To get Wendy Kenny, that's what he tried to do with too, Kenny. So Steve tried to come on to him. What did he say he did to him? He said that uh, one time, uh, uh, he said that he was in, in uh, the boat. I think he said, oh, because that's something to do with some bunk beds. He said, Mary, I was sleeping. You know, I was just sleeping in my, my uh, face in the wall. You know, I was just facing the wall, my back to the door. He said, then I heard somebody come into the room. And he said, uh, he looked up and then it was Steve. And Steve said, never mind, man. I just came in here to get something. So he said, Steve was buck naked. Get the fuck out of here. I'm going to tell you. He said, Steve was buck naked. The kid said, before he could, you know, he just swung around with his feet on the floor. He said, when he swung around. Steve kind of picking. I mean, he just sticking in the man's mouth or nothing. It's like he swung around and his eyes were eye level with Steve's penis. I so would. He said, "Is what? His what? His eyes was with the what?" And his no, eyes no. were eye level with Steve's penis. I sticking would. in the man's mouth or nothing. It's like he swung around and his eyes were eye level with Steve's penis. I now, Kenny said. You know, Steve didn't shove the meat in his mouth, but when Kenny woke up, he was eyeing eye with the Loch Ness monster that was Steve's penis. Now, I want to know, was it limp or was it erect? Kenny, can we ask you? And yes, you guys, I know the Kenny and Storm do too. We ain't going to do that to Kenny, though. We, we ain't going to do that.
in it though. I know who it is, but we ain't yeah. gonna do that to get it. Yeah. it is, but but late but ladies, late listen. Look, with comedians on the road, sometimes the, the men they do have to share a room. Sometimes it happens like that, right? That I'm not saying they make you funny, but what I'm saying is, would you look at me funny if I was butt naked in the room, reaching over another man while he's sleeping in the bed? Sound like some prison shit to me. Six is up down, boy, and suck me. That's what Steve tell me what's on your mind. Okay. I went th- Wow. He said, man, I'm just trying to reach up here. I'm looking for something. He-, he said, I'm looking for something. He was looking for something to stick that. You know, let me I got a reach. He thought that maybe Kenny would say, oh, okay, I'll hook you up. That's what he thought. Five, and I said, Kenny, what did you do? I just turned back around and laid down. And he turned- <laughs> 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 well, There's always what we can prove on this channel here. There's always what we can prove. <laughs> he said, <laughs> I just turned around and went to sleep. Was he trying to pretend it was a nightmare? I just turned around. Now, now listen, I don't know if turning your back to somebody that was ass naked with a meat out was smart either. So like what you gonna do like like it's like here you just like 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 you ain't gonna say that you just you just you shut up and you saw it right there and you just like hold up wait a minute hold and, up come on and then you just and then you just lay it back down like that okay. did he lay down like that did he I think he turned the other way storm <laughs> I think he turned the other way. He <laughs> turned this way, and then he put yeah. the rug on. Put the blanket over your head too. Yeah, yeah. Just come on, let's do this, y'all. Y'all want to tell some shit? Let's do it. That let's do it. I'm just, I'm just saying. And there's I don't know. Part to that video as well. I don't right? know if I, I don't know if I want to turn my ass to a grown man that's in the room with his meat out. But what would you have done if somebody walked up and had their meat in your face like a storm? What would you have done? I woke up and started swinging because it ain't no reason for me to be in my face. <laughs> you heard me? Hmm. Oh, Kenny, but God. see, he was he was working with Kenny. They worked together and stuff like that. So you know he was probably too scared to tell because Steve was helping pay this man bills. So what you gonna say? Okay, it's okay. You can keep your weenie out. It's okay. Sure, walk in here by neck and reach out. You gotta reach. You gotta reach real deep to you gotta reach real deep. I wonder what he was reaching for. Mm-hmm. Me too. You yeah. know, you know what song came in my head? Like as I was saying that, what's that song? I think it's by Escape. You're my little secret. And that's how we should keep it and every little thing. Kenny, so so what do you think happened though? Y'all want to know? Maybe I'll send Storm the other half of that video on the next time we go and try to roast somebody a little bit. Because she said his name, and there was another old man with Kenny as well. And after that, they say Kenny ran like hell. Mm-hmm. What mm-hmm. man you know with another man room butt neck with no drawers on? I'll wait. That's absolutely insane. Let a woman walk in there with her titties all out in front of me. What you think I'm going to do? Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. Yeah, okay. Just saying. <laughs> hey, that's what Steve was like. Yeah, like, I'm going to get into that, y'all. And that's how he wants to keep it. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Let's get into this letter with Terry. Brace yourself for this letter. Uh, okay, share this tab. And now, we're, we're stopping up this. This was an eight-year relationship. Well, you gonna read it, ain't you, Storm? Uh huh. All right, y'all, brace yourself. Let's hear this little nasty eight-year relationship as another mistress, but she wasn't a Libra, y'all. Now I think she's an Aries. Go ahead. Ooh, ooh. If you ask me, what do I think he would say about the book? My answer is this. I heard him say once the biggest thing that President Clinton did wrong was tell the truth. Wow. He said he doesn't care if you have a picture of him with some woman with his butt up in the air 
and his social security number tattooed across it, he would still say, it ain't me, I wasn't there. A man will lie when the truth, uh, no, a man will lie when, when the truth will do. Steve today, hook. Steve today, I sit here wondering why I sacrificed myself. I look at the condom package that you left here on my nightstand and one, at least Steve wore a condom and wonder how confident you feel when it comes down to predicting my actions. You are so confident about this relationship that you stopped by the store and bought a condom before coming over to see me to talk. And when I read over the copies of the sexual email exchanges that we shared, you asking me to spread my legs open wide so you can slide your cock in deep in my pussy, or you asking me to tell you to stick your cock in my ass. Wow! <laughs> Steve! Oh wow! Terry wrote that to Steve Harvey now, y'all. Terry Smith, his eight-year mistress, and she got stopped messing with Steve in 2003. That's what she had wrote that. She wrote that to Steve. Tell us. That's what that Vaseline for, so he can stick it in that ass. Hey, Hold she, up. He, hey that leather made store put on his glasses, y'all. Look, he said, let me put on my glasses. Did I read that right? Did I read it right? Wow. <laughs> she said, or are you asking me to tell you to stick your cock in my ass? I save them. I read over them from time to time when I am thinking of you. You know, they do say Steve is nasty in them emails. Today, they cause me pain and sadness trying to read between the lines. You ended the exchanges with good night, my lover. For eight years, we have been lovers, and you have taken me through some unnecessary emotional lows, abortion, you getting married, and falsely convincing me that you were getting a divorce, falsely convincing me that you were arranging a way to get me a new car for my birthday, calling my mother and telling her that you were in love with her daughter and you would pay my rent if I would leave the other person in my life and stay in Los Angeles. Wow. Um, Yo, she had, she got pregnant and she did abort the baby. Steve found out later that she aborted the baby, but Geneva did a part one, two, three, and four. And she wrote passages or she read passages from the book. It talked about how she stayed right around the corner from Mary she got pregnant. She didn't tell Steve. Then Mary found out about Terry, found out where she lived. Cassie Davis, the girl from um, House of Pain, she sent her to Terry's address and found out that Terry lived over there. Then Mary found out that Terry lived over there. Steve came back, slept with uh, Terry one more time and threw her out of the house took all her furniture, and the only thing she had left was her car, and he tried to take that too. And she ended up being um, on the side of the road with a flat tire. Steve had put her out, put all the shit on trucks, just didn't give a flip about her anymore. And then she was at a gas station washing her body up, and a white woman found Terry and read one of her passages to her book, like, it, like Storm's reading this letter, and Terry got a six-figure book deal from this whole thing with Steve Harvey. That's how she was able to come back up. But Steve Harvey paid somebody to stop the book. He paid $120,000 and scared her, and she stopped the book. The one that Geneva got is probably the last one. She said Cassie Davis. Mary said Cassie Davis to where Terry lived at because this nigga had Terry around the corner. In an eight-year relationship, he, she lived around the corner. Every time Steve would go out to any of his functions, he would sit for Terry, and Terry was there at his functions fulfilling his needs. Wow, I gotta get back to this letter. Come on, let's do it. Let's put it out here. Yes. Oh my goodness. I can't believe I, I just can't believe Cassie Davis ended up in the store. She walked her ass over there to that apartment. Yeah, yeah. She she showed it there, so shout yeah. out to Cassie. No disrespect. You do be yeah, wild. Cassie, we're gonna talk about you too later. Go ahead. Oh my goodness. Cassie waddled over there to that apartment. Okay. Um Abortion, false. Oh, wow. So he promised her a car, calling her mama, just all kinds of stuff. Your promises have hurt me for the last time. The night you brought this condom over your word, you brought this condom over your words were, I will work out something to get you the rent money and handle the cost of relocating my furniture and car. And then you fucked me twice. Oh, uh. oh. 
You came to me and asked me to change my life for you. You said you would pay the rent and other expenses until I could get on my feet. So I took your word as law and stayed, but you have not kept your word. Looking back over the past years, more of the recent years, I get the feeling that you are intentionally trying to cause me torment and anguish. This is a life you have done this to. I've tried numerous times to reach you so I can get the wise answered. Like when I came to you and told you I was pregnant and you said I did not force you to listen. I need for you to tell me how you can mistreat someone that has been with you through all of your ups and downs. Why do you continue to cause pain to the ones that you say you love and only love you as you are back? Why did you do what you did the last night we were together? The night that Megan, Megan's mother passed away. You have caused my life to be messed up and we need to resolve this mess. I am tired. I can and will not allow you to destroy my mind and my life this way. Now, again, you guys, this woman wrote a book and it was called Men Will Lie When the Truth Will Do. Geneva had the book over there on her page called Geneva's Closet. It's a four part series that she read and all the stuff that Stillman just talked about is in that book. It, but it's worse than what y'all could ever been imagined. The shit that she read was very ratchet. And Steve knew all this. He had Mary and he had Margie at the time. And realized 2003, Terry Smith stopped dealing with him then. That's when the book was released. So to 2003, Mary found out about that when all this transpired and happened. She found out Steve was cheating on her first anniversary when he had got this girl pregnant. So she found all about that herself as well. So she, Steve has been, he has a, a pattern, a consistency of cheating. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, when you do something, if you're a liar, you'll start saying little white lies. Then you said, then you start like full blown lies. There's a pattern to everything you do. If you're a rapist, you're going to like find a little kid, then you're going to molest them, then you're going to start raping. There's patterns to it. Steve is a serial cheater. Steve is a serial liar. Point blank, period, simple. And look at that girl, how she had to go through all that. And at the end, you guys, eight years, and he threw her out like a, a bag of dirty trash. But she was still wrong, too, because at that time, Steve was married to Mary, but he was messing with her and he was messing with Margie. I found some documents where Steve put Margie's name on a house in 2003. If you don't got that, later on, when we come back again, Storm, I'll show you that. And he put Margie name in 2003 as Margie Harvey, which would have been fraud because of the simple fact her name was not Harvey in 2003. She didn't marry Steve in 2007. So why is there a house in Margie's name in 2003? But he say he divorced Mary November 29, 2005. The dates are all up here right now. So it don't even matter what paperwork they feel like I don't got. I studied their whole divorce and saw every crooked thing that they did. Lord have mercy. Now, I want to prove also that you're not lying because hey, deep this, ar this article from December 20th, 2007 from the uh, Courthouse News staff, Courthouse News Science, uh, said Terry Smith, who said she had a nine-year relationship with comedian Steve Harvey, has sued Harvey and Big City Enterprises in a dispute over rights to the book she wrote about their relationship, Men Will Lie When the Truth Will Do which Harvey allegedly fears will hurt his clean-cut, good guy, and likable Christian image. See the federal complaint. And, 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 when you click on the link to the federal complaint, it's gone. They scrubbed it. I might got it, though. I got it through my stuff. I may got it. I, I made sure I locked out every piece of crooked shit he did because I didn't trust none of this no more. I saw too much crooked stuff. And someone said, I wouldn't, I'd wouldn't. i be bad to be on Essie's bad side. I don't want you to be on my bad side because I'm a beast at what I do. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to say what I have to say, and I'm going to tell the truth. If I'm lying, that's what court's for. He's not going to take me up legally and take me to court. He will continue to blackmail me, though. But it's okay. I'll still continue to tell my truth, no matter how long it takes. Steve is going to pay for be accountable for the things he has done. Period. Period. And speaking of paying for the things he has done, let's get to this National Enquirer article. All right. This is when he sent the goon after his own son. Who went in out of Florida with Florida International University? Yeah, with that big S on that side, it goes at the bottom. 
other one store to the left, to the left some more, to the left at the bottom. Yep. All up in there. It talks about what he did, what went to the All right. All right. In the report, Florida International University Police recount how they received a call from Winston's terrified biological mom, Mary, alleging her boy had been abducted and removed from his dorm room. People, we've already proven that that actually happened. Um, I even had a source to come to me afterwards that said that the whole floor uh, was in tears. The college dorm room uh, uh, floor, you know, you know how they be on levels. They was cool with Winton and he was a good kid and they, they, they were in tears when he left. They didn't understand why. It was all very traumatic. But anyway, in an exclusive in, in a world exclusive interview, Mary later told the inquirer Winton had discovered Steve was cheating on his stepmom. That's Marjorie. After seeing, wait, 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 wait. You can go up, you can go up. After seeing photos oh, and texts on his father's phone. What did he see on his father's phone, Essie? He saw naked videos. He saw naked pictures of Steve with a white girl screwing her. And, and went to call Mary and showed Mary the phone uh, phone with everything in it. So he actually saw a whole video that Steve had taped screwing a white girl. Who the white girl was, I don't know. After that, um, went to lost mad respect for her, Steve. And he wanted to leave. And that's when they had went to snatched out of school. What you just read is I had that snatched. Okay, first of all, you guys, we gave the article to them. Okay. But Mary was scared that Steve was going to beat Winton. So Mary had me call the National Choir and make them pull it because she didn't know he was going to put that part in there. If you tell her the truth, you got to tell the whole truth about it because this is what actually started it because Winton saw Steve Harvey in a video and some nasty footage of him screwing a white girl. Point blank, period, simple. That's what happened. I said what I said the way I said it. And it states what Mary said in there as well. Winton, uh, it goes on to say, Winton was in school in Florida. And he called, and that talking about he called Mary. And he called me and asked me to get on Skype with him. Mary told the inquirer. He asked me if I thought Steve would ever be unfaithful to Marjorie. I said, well... I would like to think that he would be smarter than to jeopardize everything he has and do something that dumb. Winton said, mom, you're wrong. He found out about this woman in his father's life. And he said, mom, it's been going on for over two years. He has found a picture. He was totally disgusted by what he saw. He said he cannot believe that after all these years, him telling me how to live my life and how to be a faithful and how to be a man that he was doing this. He was totally devastated when he found out he had been lied to. Mary says Steve, 60 years old, found out his son had confided in her about the cheating and went ballistic. Steve had called him that whole day, went and picked up the phone and patched me in, Mary told the inquirer. Steve was shouting all kinds of crazy stuff, belittling him and yelling, who the, who the effing think you talking to? You do what the F I tell you to do. Yeah. Then, and in the wee hours of the following morning, came the infamous incident in which Winton confronted Big Boom. While details of what happened are not recounted in the report, Mary told us Boom dragged Winton out of his dorm room, smashed his phone, tore items from the walls, and hurled possessions on the floor. Now, do you know how traumatic that is? And not just for Winton, the other kids who saw it. Now, this is who... This is who Family Feud got playing Family Feud and doing all these other things. This man sent a six-foot bodyguard to that baby when he was 18 years old, had him snatch his phone, snatched him out the bed. Now, if you want me to show him, I can go pull the police report right now. So I can see the police report, too. I have the police report to show the whole thing. And Margie told Boom, snatch that motherfucking phone, take it and smash it. And that's what Boom did. And that, that dead and Mary called. She wouldn't even talk to her baby no more. It's so sad and it's so unfortunate. And people, we have the uh, the police report actually listed um, <laughs> on Patreon and, and for members only. Um, I would love to show it right now, but we can't because they will be able to flag the video for privacy if I do that. So we uh, they lucky. They lucky. But it's out there and it ain't never going nowhere. I found this old video of Boom. Let's 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 get into. I want to see what this is about real quick. Just going talking. The Home Depot on 
new Snap Finger Woods Drive tomorrow morning, okay, Friday morning, 6 a.m. till 10 a.m. And everywhere you see Steve Harvey, you see this, this super tall, real big, real nice until you take him out, brother, <laughs> named Big Boom. And uh, Big Boom is in the house. Now, I'm going to keep it real. Boom, how you doing, first of all, man? What's up, Big Baby? It's all good. Uh, uh -huh. Big Big Boom, now, you know, I'm always running into the ladies who say, man, yeah, I love you. Uh -huh. Big old teddy bear, man. Six, six, 360 pounds. Tom fine specimen of a man. That's what I'm talking about. He said he's six, six, 360 pounds. And you, you snatched him out of school. And you pull in the snack, and, and Winston is tall, but Winston is thin. Mm -hmm. 360 pound man dragging Winton all up and through the college dorm and, and college halls. Can y'all imagine? And then y'all want to say what Mary shouldn't do, but she had to live this all this time. And then I'm watching it play out, knowing that she ain't lying. It'd been one thing if I knew she was, was lying, but she wasn't lying. All this happened. There are police reports on this, you guys, because of all these situations. This nigga, 300-something three, pounds, and he going to snatch that baby like that? You know that traumatized Winton. That's why Winton felt like he couldn't help. I mean, that's why he in Dubai. Because who going to say Winton over here in the United States? Nobody. Because he Nobody. got to pay him off. It's and so everybody don't see this video and y'all logged in, share to one person. Because at the end of the day, a person like this don't need to be on TV because he's a natural born liar. You heard Storm just read the letter. Steve said he will lie no matter what the truth is. He's going to lie regardless. Quite naturally, he's going to make us think that him and Margie is doing good, but the apple don't fall too far from the tree. They both lose. If anybody go against each other between Margie and Steve, they're both going to lose. So that's what I do know. They'll both probably end up in jail. That's what I do know. So they pretty much stuck with each other. So they really don't care. They just want you guys to see it one way. But that stuff that we're reading now, that's how it is behind closed doors. And if he cheated on Marsha to with Mary, then he cheated on Margie with, you know what I'm saying? He's going to cheat. and up cheated on Margie. That's why his kids ain't got no respect for him. He ain't got respect for himself. Hell, she didn't have respect for Steve. She slept with your brother and got pregnant. And then you throw away the matches, but you kept the hoe. Where, where they do that at? I'm just saying. But you got rid of Mary. Mm -hmm. They said somebody said didn't speak by property in Dubai. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and if y'all remember, Cheryl Strawberry husband was trying to get over to Dubai. Yeah. And I think that's who I feel like Steve probably gave Cheryl Strawberry the money to clear her husband. That way she gave him the money to clear her husband. So he will go to um well, he won't go to prison. So what they're gonna do now, they're all gonna collaborate together so they can get Cheryl Strawberry Hubs out of this trouble. Mm -mm -mm. So, uh, I know they've been loving some big boom for a while. And I'm now I'm happily married, but they love me because I'm helping them now. No doubt, no doubt. Yeah. But they were loving you back in the day, oh. which is why you have created this book. And the name of the book is If You Want Closure in Your Relationship, Start with Your Legs. How with your books? No, that's where the trouble starts. Mm. It always starts at the leg. Mm, the leg. How's that? See, a woman never have a problem out of a man mm -hmm. before she over the leg. It's after. All right. Now, now women are looking at you a little crazy right now. Explain. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. Well, be before you have sex with a man, I need you because you have something that I want. Right. But after you have sex with me, you need me because now I have something you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what's that? He said, so he said, before a man had sex with you, you have something that he wants, which is your body. Then once a man gets it, at that point, I guess the woman wants a relationship, so she's just not used and thrown away. I guess that's what he's trying to say. Yeah, because I, I want to hear what he say she won't, because, like, so basically, like, he's trying to say that you keep the woman. Okay, go ahead. Because you don't want to go through all these changes to find another man to have sex with. So you just keep me the fool that you done messed around with and put up with my mess so I can come over again. Because mm. if you know if you run me off, you want to start back to the first step. Go back to step one. Step with, one. With a, with a new jumper. But I was just telling you mm -hmm. a few minutes ago, mm -hmm. women need to, to treat men like you finna go out the country. You say you've been out of the country before. Right? The country before. They give you a pamphlet to read, right. all instructions mm -hmm. to say, know before you go. Right. 
Because we'll let you out of here. Right. But you mess up, we won't let you back we'll in. Let you back in. You and that's the same way women ought to do their men. Yeah. 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 I'm asking yeah. women to make men mad before you have sex with them. Mm. You okay. don't know why, do you? Why? Because you make me mad before you have sex, and I go off on you, tell you, I'll kill you. You don't know who you're messing with. Right there. You know. Probably don't want to mess with him. Right, right. right I'm asking right. women before you have sex with a man, stop at the store, get your can of fix a flat. Mm. You don't know why, do you? Why? Because when you get to the work, when you get to your job, let the air out your tie. Mm. Stop at the store, get the fix a flat first. Because mm -hmm. this might not work. Right, right. Let your out your tie. <laughs> Call your man that want to be your man. Right. That been big and calling up on you, tell him you have a flat, see what he say. Mm. You understand? See how he if he said, baby, ain't nobody around there to fix it. Mm. Where your brother at? Mm. You don't want to mess with him. Okay. Because he don't have time to, to do his man thing. He's not gonna but if he said, baby, what time you get off? Mm. Okay, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring you my car. Right. You go home. Right. I'm gonna get the flat fixed, and then I'll meet you at your house and we can trade cars again. You know he's more likely to be your night to shine. Oh, he can say, baby, I tell you what, call the tow truck. Oh Lord. This nigga talking about fix a flat and he's a pimp back in the day. Are you for real? Oh, you gonna go ahead. like first of all, nigga, I'm not gonna flat my tie for your ass to come save me. That's what I got triple A for. Who are you like <laughs> I'm like, why would I flat my tire? What kind of stuff is that? Go get fix a flat. Nigga, call a triple A. That's what you do. And then like basically he trying to say that women get stuck on the dingling. That's what you he basically trying to say. And that is true. Some women do. <laughs> but you got to know what you will stand for and what you don't. You know what I'm saying? Because how can an ex-pimp tell you something? So now you got a woman and a wife so you can tell a real woman how to be. Keep her legs closed or start with the legs or then make them angry. Make them angry. Why? So then what when you make them angry? Steve was supposed to take anger management. That was ordered. I mean, did you in that part where he said something, he said something about uh, make a woman angry and tell them what you want to want to know. That's some shit Steve said before, because Steve threatened to kill Mary before. How about that? Sure did on a radio show. I think I got the text messages and the link to the radio show. So then we threatened to argue what happens then. So they argue what happens then. Like, like so you're going to have some dirty sex for y'all to argue? Bro, get up out of here. You want to know something? You call get some fix or flat. You call you some flex or flat. Nigga, we call it AAA, triple A. Exactly. Exactly. Fix a flag. But look how big that guy is. And look at his mentality. Yeah, they probably ain't about 20 of them. Mm, mm, mm. So I'm bringing up all the juice on my pages. Woo! What is this one? Oh, hold on. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I just he, is it. The 70s. he is a pimp. He was a pimp before he wrote that book. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, hell. Oh, hell. Just to know how it was winter when that happened, though. Because just to know that a dude going to bite his baby on the butt, that don't even sound right. No, it don't. Winter was, um, oh, he was young. This was before, this was before me and Steve got divorced. So, uh, what, 2004, maybe, somewhere in there? Maybe even younger than that. So, but then, you know, I wasn't shocked. I mean, when she said that to me, it just kind of just, you know, uh, she saw me. I don't know how he meant that. She said, I'm just telling you, that's what he told me one time that his daddy beat him on his butt. Now, obviously, it made Winterfield some kind of way, or he would have told his, you know, his, I don't know, auntie, niece, does, or whatever dying is to him. Yeah. You know? Because why would he need to repeat that? You know, after why? Why bring that up? Well, why what dads do you know? What dads do you know? Just beat them. I mean, bite their boys on their butts for what? Even with football players, they pat each other on the butt and go about their business. What is the bite about? But she didn't say nothing shocking to me. I know, I know, Steve did something to the women because I know my son. I know his face. I see his face. You know your children. To be clear, she Mary said that Steve was biting Winton on the butt, biting his butt. Now, why would he bite his son on the butt? And it made him feel uncomfortable. Went to made went to feel real uncomfortable that Steve was biting him on the butt. That he went and told his auntie, and the auntie came and told Mary. Mm -mm -mm. 
But you know, I noticed when I noticed when I kept saying he was a um, serial cheater, you kept saying a sexual predator. Those are two different things. And I, I, I know. Oh, okay. But I said so. You that base was telling me in my mind, Mary. I felt like something happened because you said sexual predator. Then I thought about when you said you had to snatch my leg when Steve standing in front of butt naked. None of that sound right. Like you know, are you down to down low? I mean, what's up? You know, come on now. Yes, he is. Did I say that early on when we met? Yes, he is. Steve on down low. Yes. But like, but so. Like though, damn, I mean that would make me want to snatch my baby too, because I like I seen Winter, right? Why do you think I was so upset when they took Winter back up there? If he tried to do that to Stephen and Stephen was 17, what you think he been doing to Winter? And Winter ain't know where Steve's size, you know, he's a little boy. He's a little boy. And he's a young, like I said in my video, Winter's been a kind, sweet little boy his whole life. And for you to take somebody, it's like if you got a virgin little girl and somebody snatches that little girl and just rapes her, rapes her at nine and ten. She's supposed to get over that? Oh, I'm 30, so I done got over it. Look at all the stuff your parents did to you, Essie. That, that stuff you did, okay, Essie, 50 years old, so she ain't got past that. No, she had no. no more than I have, no more than any other woman that's been raped and attacked. So I'm speaking my truth. I'm speaking. If Winter don't ever talk to me no more in life, that's Winter's choice. But I'm speaking my truth about what his daddy did to him as far as that baby. That's all I got to say. That's all I got to say. But you can look like, I looked at the pictures back when Winter was with you. His whole features was different. That's right. After that, you and you can go and look and you can tell. You see it on videos. And then, too, you know, that's scared right. him into fear. So he's that's really, right. like, traumatized. But that's what you talking about. He's traumatized. Mentally, emotionally, sexually, y'all twisted. Look at all that shit went to my hair. You know, when Winter, when Winter was 13, and I don't know if you got that picture of him from my uh, Instagram. Winter had it's a black and white picture, and Winter got on this little T-shirt, and it's from his like his neck up, and that's all you see is from his his torso up. Winter just looks clean, healthy, untouched, just like I did when I met that nigga. Winter all kind of clean, but this Winter I see now. He is a, he is a, um, what's the word I'm trying to use? Uh, like a reflection of what's happening to him right now. The turmoil, everything that's going on in his life. And I, I bet, I almost bet my life Marjorie did something to him. When he went up to her, when she called him up to her hotel room in Dubai, it wasn't to have no conversation. It wasn't to say it. She came out of there with her towel on. She didn't just come out there with no towel on because she a bitch. She's a career whore, just like Steve is, you know? She answered the door. Wait, wait, wait. Let's talk. Let's talk about it. Let's let's get oh, into God. it. Speak, speak. Let's get into it. Let's get into, let's it. Get into so, it. So we already got Steve, Steve Harvey with the, which with Mary said that he tried to molest his stepson at the time. Steve, Steve. In. I know that got confusing. Then. We know that Steve Harvey beat Winton like a Hebrew slave. And I don't say that I don't say that to be funny. I say that to say to, create a, to create a visual that he yeah. beat him like a Hebrew slave. Yeah, his back was open, wept, big webs, y'all. Open. Yes. Open. Um yes. Biden biting Winton on his butt and whatever else he's done to make Winton feel uncomfortable. Now we got Marjorie. And we already know her history and how she's gotten down. Why would a stepmother call her stepson into her room and she's in nothing but a towel? A teenage boy at that. Not no little baby boy. Two, three years old. We talking about 13, 14. A, teen, a, a, a kid that know that you butt ass naked and you got different body parts than him. Why would you invite him up to your room? You you can't put on no robe. It ain't nothing you got to talk about that important. They can't wait for you to put on no robe on your naked ass. She tried to entice. She tried to entice him. You know what I'm saying? She tried to entice him. Mary thought that she probably had did something with Winton. That's how close she felt like she had got to her. It would explain a whole lot. It would explain a whole lot. Mm -hmm. The thing about Steve is he's not just a serial cheater. He cheats because he 
he can't get enough sex with different people. For him, to, she needs all these different women to satisfy his sexual appetite. That's why he needed all these women. Because he can't have sex with me all day, every day, to, to fulfill his sexual pleasures. That's impossible. You know, even if I wanted to. I can't satisfy nobody like that. I pretty much have to screw him all day, every day. <laughs> 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 but you know what the bad part about all this is like like people out on the outside looking in but you see it and went to pictures like that hat that was on that 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 thing right then when i seen that picture i already knew that ain't the one thing that i know mary in 2013 he told us he didn't want to be there though you know what i'm saying come on now so I went to his 13th birthday. He met me at that home, hotel with Stephen. The first thing out of his mouth was, well, Mom, I'm not that innocent little kid you used to know. That's the first word out of his mouth. Not that then he said, Mom, because this is this lady in the mall. She had this upper scale shoe store, you know, with the Jessica Simpsons, all of that. Her name was Leslie. Me and Leslie were like really tight. So he said, Mom, you mind if I go over and help Miss Leslie at the store? And Stephen looked at me, I looked at him, and I said, okay, went to the problem. He went on in that store. He was over there all day talking to, you know, working with his life, Mr. Larry, Larry and Leslie. And uh, he stayed over there with them, you know, helping them do inventory or whatever. When I saw Winton, Winton looked like some shit had happened to him that he couldn't go back from. Either Steve did some shit to him, Marjorie did something to him, or he done had some cooker come over there and do something to Winton. A now, what? A cooker? My baby, wait, a hooker. My baby was initiated on the 13th. I don't know what Steve was doing to him before that, but when they she said her baby was initiated on the 13th. At 13 years old, she said Winter got initiated. And I want her to break that down to me. She was scared to break down to me what initiated meant. So that made me know that Mary knew some shit that was going on in the industry. Because why would she use initiated of all things? That word. And we already know how they get down in this industry. I'm trying to see if I can bring up my Gematria calculator to see what I can bring up. Let's see. So he was at, he was 13 years old when Mary felt like they had did something to him because he came and told her, I'm not the same little innocent boy anymore, mama. Why would a 13-year-old say that? I would still be questioning my son right now if he said something like that. Well, what do you mean, Winton? And Stephen, his brother had the same um, feeling about Winton. So now you guys, if y'all don't know, Mary had an older son before Steve, and his name is Steven as well. And Steve raised him to about 17, and then he just dumped him on the side of the road like he did Mary. He never contacted the baby no more, knowing he was in Steven's life all that time. Mm -mm -mm. I'm going to let them read between the lines with that uh, uh, initiation. But let's... I, uh -huh. I, 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 Put, I put it back a little bit. Let's go. The baby was initiated on the 13th. I don't know what Steve was doing to him before that, but when Winton said, I'm no longer that, I'm not longer, no longer that sweet kid or something you used to know. And then walk off. What does initiate though mean? You well, like like what? Like, I don't get that. Like, like he had to do something with somebody? I don't understand. What you no, talking about? I'm saying that at 13, either Steve, I'm going to some chat because I don't want to say it. It's like when a young boy has his first uh, sexual encounter, first ejaculation or whatever. I think that at 13, either Marjorie had sex with, with Winter or caused him to have an orgasm. Why would they do something like that, though? What would be the. They are sick. That's it. They're sick. That's why they are sick. That's why they would do it. To control him sex and to screw him up in his head at 13. We're going to confuse you. Because if you're at 13 and you're doing that to a little boy, right when he's getting into his manhood about how he should feel about a woman, okay? He's a little boy. The boys typically like women. So to undermine that, what would somebody do? Either a grown woman would do something to him or a grown man. Because they're sick. That's why they would do it. That's why I was crying, walking back and forth on that video. I knew the full ramifications of it. Why do you think Winston up there with him? And Winston won't say nothing. What Winston's supposed to say? 
Yeah. Like, come to the song and say, this is what my daddy did for what? And like, so Stu and Ricky Smiley can say, oh, Wendy tripping. He just fall. He just trying to get back at his daddy. We just see all that mess happening. He sees other people that try to speak out. People ain't even in entertainment. Look what happens. Yeah. They side with their daddy. And understand this about Wendy. They side with the money. Did he not, did Wendy not feel, did Wendy not feel like he had been uh, uh, betrayed? Brutalized. Wait, wait, wait. Now, Bobby Evans, my lawyer, Judge Dry, the doctor, the police, the state attorney general. You got all these people saying, you're not big enough to tell your story. So why would he tell it? Why would he tell it? This dude that shut my mama down. He shut the police down. He shut the courthouse down. He shut the state down. So what am I going to say? Yeah. Yeah. Hey girl, he should say something. Y'all don't even know what the hell y'all talking about. Nigga, somebody rape you and you're a little boy. You gonna jump oh. out the hell? <laughs> <laughs> and that came from. Did you, did you she said that she said if somebody rape you, did you hear her say that? I sure did. If somebody rape you. What are you gonna do? Who are you gonna tell? So this is the shit that I had to live with since 2013. You see what I'm mm. saying? Knowing that, that Mary done told me that, and knowing that he done gagged Mary because of this situation and all this that y'all listening to right now. How should I feel as an activist and a mandate reporter, as a mother, as a woman? I should not say shit. I, I should just keep my mouth closed. Is that what y'all really think? See, that's what people are saying. Why you got to say anything? Well, why not say anything? Because he's a celebrity. And this woman sitting around thinking that this man will rape her kid. And Mary know her, man. Mary know him. He walking around butt naked in front of Winton. There's a video with that, too, where Mary, Mary said that he would walk around butt naked in front of Winton with his dick out. And then he had his dick in right in Winton's face. Why? Why? And it's all funny. And Mary had to snatch Winton and bring Winton in with her so he wouldn't be standing in front of her naked. So Steve wouldn't be standing in front of Winton naked. So if he started that at a young age like that, when he took Winton totally away from Mary, what you thought he probably did to her? Everything up under the sun? If he beat Winton like that, and where was Margie? Mary said far she know Margie could help beat Winton. She didn't know. And 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 actually something just came to me. It just it just this, I think the spirit was talking to me, Essie. Let's hear it. It's funny because Kenny said Steve put his meat in his face. Then Mary said that Steve was putting his meat all in Winston's face. But I remember on the Steve Harvey morning show, he told a story about him pranking his sons and his stepsons. He was mad at them about something. And he called them all up to come into the bathroom, his bathroom in his room. And when he opened the door, he was butt ass naked. Why? Fresh out the shower. Why? And was yelling at him and fussing at him. Why? First, I, I'm, I'm gonna tell you. First thing that he said, the first thing the boy said was, "Oh, we didn't, we didn't know you was right out the bathroom. I bet we'll come back in a minute." He said, "No, nah, no, nah, look at me when I'm yelling." He was mad about something, and he wanted to prove a point. So he made them stare at him, butt ass naked, wet from a shower. As he yelled at them about something he was mad about around the house, I think they weren't picking up after they sell for. He said his purpose of doing that was to really get them to understand this made him upset. Stop doing this shit. So instead of just talking to him, he said, "Now nah, I'm gonna take off all my clothes and let you come in this room and see me butt ass naked." So then I remember Tommy, the co-host, saying, "Well, where was Marjorie?" He said, "I told Marjorie to shut her ass up." And Marjorie had to wrap a towel around her face to keep from laughing. So Marjorie thought it was funny. So what grown man you know going to get uh, on his sons to be arguing and you in the bathroom butt naked and you want your sons to be staring at you for what? And you So you couldn't wait till you, when, when the mess occurred, you couldn't call them then. You had to wait till you get boot butt naked. Get out the shower. Call these young boys. Mary said that was a part of them. Him like pronging them, like you know, getting them, prepping them, getting ready for whatever. Grooming, grooming, okay, grooming. Yeah, yeah, grooming them. Grooming. Mary said that grooming them for that. Cause what's the purpose in that? 
Yeah. But he got his sons and and Marjorie kids. So that was that was Justin. That was Winston. That would have been Broderick Jr. He said the boys. They, oh, dad, my bad. We we didn't know you was fresh out. The, you know, we didn't know you had just got out the bathroom. We'll come back. No, look at me. Damn it. Look at me. He told this story on his own show. See, so, and see, people don't be listening. It comes to stuff like this to come back and really make people pay attention. So what was so relevant about that story that you want to tell it? That you was naked? That you made the boys come in there because you said, come here and watch me naked. You said, come in here and let me fuss at you because you naked. You can go with a mess with that with some clothes on. See, all that shit's perverted if you ask me. So these are the things that we learned behind it. He didn't see nothing wrong with that. Just like he don't see nothing wrong with Cheryl Strawberry. And all these people that's around Steve, Cheryl Strawberry, the whole radio crew, Margie, they all know this about this man. Y'all the ones don't know. Y'all yep. the ones that's blind. Y'all yep. the ones that like thinking that this man is top notch and he's up here all jacked up. Mess with Mary said rape. Mary said tried to molest. Mary said those things. She said what she said. So why would she lie? That's why she been gagged. But the thing of it is, you can't gag me. Mm -hmm. Kimberly said, I'm wondering if Steve Harvey was sexually abused. We talked about that. Who abused him in the church, Jesse? I ain't quite sure, but I got the video. If y'all want to find, find a video and send it to you, Storm. She okay. said it was a church member. I don't know if it was a choir member or a church member, but somebody supposedly had violated him in church. Was it and a female or male? A male. A male. So Steve got touched by a man at a very early age. And evidently he had to let Mary know that. But to know that we we were just seeing this now, look how Winton looked on those pictures and look how Winton looked now. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And y'all, it don't matter if Steve or Winton said it didn't happen. If if it leaked out some kind of way and that shit came out, it happened. I know for a fact that Margie slept with Boone. You know what I'm saying? I can't say what year, but I know that for a fact. And back in the day, everybody was so freaky. That everybody was taping each other and videotaping people. So I'm sure the VH test just does exist somewhere. Just like went to saw Steve with a white girl screwing her in his phone. He videotaped this woman in the phone sleeping with her. You know what I'm saying? This is what they do. So it doesn't even matter what we say. They're going to always be true because the media is going to run with him because he got that seniority because he's on the news or he's on a big show. What does that mm -hmm. mean, though? If you're still lying, you ain't telling the truth. And again, ask yourself why I ain't been sued yet if I'm lying. Mary said it. Why you ain't sued? Because she told me. So if they want to come at Mary now, they would have to come sue me. They're not stupid enough to try to come sue me. On what level? And you damn sure not going to get me in Texas. He don't live in Texas. He went to a, court, a state that he didn't even live in and tried to put me in a case to shut me up. Because all this we talking about right now. It's and look how kind of trifling he is. And look at all the stuff mentally Mary had to think about. Is he raping my kid? Is he violating Winton? What did he do to Winton? How many more times did he beat Winton? How many times did Margie watch Steve beat Winton? But I ain't hear about Lori getting beat at all. Did Lori get beat, shit beat out her like Winter did? That's why his kids ain't messing with him right now because they know who he really is. And then you putting Lori up on a pedestal, but you're not thinking about your other children. It's all grimy. It is. They said, Storm, you might want to change this title. We got into a lot. We did get into a lot. All right? <laughs> we did get into a lot. I, I ain't even going to hold you. I think I'm going to call it Steve, Marjorie, and Boone's Freak Nasty. No. Steve and more. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna figure something out. Y'all already know when Storm come, he come with the tea. And if anybody know me, my motto is it's never what I say, it's always what I can prove. Ain't nothing on here we talked about tonight that we weren't able to prove. Whether it's broader videos, and if Mary said it, she said it. That's why they gagged her because they don't want her telling it. But unfortunately, she told me in those video audios, I own that. So if I nope. want to put it up there, I will. And as a matter of fact, you know what, Nancy, if you're really feeling it. Cause you know, you you know, I got a conference this weekend. Uh, I'm speaking at it anyway. If you're really feeling it, Essie, you can send me all the audios, and we'll just release one big audio movie of everything. I, I'm feeling it. I'm y'all. Do y'all feel it? Do y'all feel that? Do y'all want Essie to send me everything, and we release it? Cause that's Essie's property. I can do it with her permission. I don't need Steve's permission. Nor do you need Mary. There, if you feel like I know you ain't trying to step to this, 
Come on now. What y'all gonna do? Do y'all want to hear everything? Do you want to hear all of Essie and Mary's <laughs> conversations? Yes. 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 Look, look at that, please. I you think guys, it's time. I think it's time to break the internet. Okay, this is my thing. If we share this with you, like I'm not like there was a lot of serious stuff talking here, rape, molestation, violate women, and everything else. So we share this and I give and take. Are y'all gonna make it be known? Do y'all need to call family to you? Can we get this man like stop? Because at the end of the day, you're sitting up here fantasizing about a man who done violated children, who sit up here co co-signed. For people who do beastiality, Cheryl Strawberry husband do beastiality, but I'm sure Steve helped him got out of jail. This is who this man is, but you won't know him unless somebody expose him. I'm not scared about nothing that I do because I can back up everything I do. And if anybody put a lawsuit on me, I know how to write a lawsuit too. I'm going to double it. So whatever you're going to do, bring your ass and do it. But the truth is the truth, and it shall set you free. And because you gag Mary, you cannot gag me. You will not gag me, and I'm not going to let you shut me down until I am out of that court case, until there is no warrant for my arrest for something I didn't do. I'm going to drag this nigga through and through. And I'm going to be honest with you, it's a whole lot of bad stuff on them tapes. If I believe reach to everything, you probably will break the internet. But that's your choice. I think it's time to release everything. I think, you know, we've we've did a three the three part series with you. Now we didn't went through the history. Now we didn't went through the history again, and I just think now to just let's let's put it on the flow. As as the kids say now, they say put it on the flow. Let's put it on the flow. While he talking about I'm fine and we fine and no, nah, you got a lot to atone for. And I'm I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this. Y'all should have knew something was wrong with Steve when he told Monique that she needed to coon in order to put food on the table for her family. That's a nigga that would have sold us back into slavery. That's a nigga that would have told on us when we was trying to lead a plantation. That's a nigga that would get on his knees for a check, just like Richard Pryor. And what's the other one that's dead, not the other comedian? That, that tried to rape Richard Pryor Jr. Paul Mooney. Mm. If y'all go back and listen to that roast, hold up. See, see, they think I'm playing. Oh, y'all, y'all got the game twisted. Hold up. Yeah, I did a roast too. Shit, let's do my two. What you talking about? Ain't, 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 it's time to stop playing games, you guys. Time is short and things are coming to an end. Ain't no punks in this. God wasn't no punk. I ain't no punk. I believe in God to the fullest. But at the end of the day, you're supposed to, you supposed to acknowledge and, and tell people about the evil things and the evil ways people are doing because if not, they're going to continue to do it. And then they'll be able to do it to someone else and someone else. And how is that possible? They continue to keep violating us for whatever reason. Stop it. <laughs> Thank you for that award. Um, <laughs> I'm Paul Mooney, and these are some of the people appearing on uh, Richard Pryor's show. Uh, what we're going to try to do is pay our respects to Richard, and at the same time, try to clear some of the surrounding him. We've all gotten to know him these past few weeks and would like to share it with you. I've known him for a long time. <laughs> Uh, when the, I met him, the first thing I noticed, uh, he was very bright, two shades lighter than me. <laughs> Since that time, we've become old and dear friends. I'm very dear to him. He's very old to me. <laughs> but he's always been very funny. He was born in Peoria, where half the kids in town okay. call him a superstar. All right, here we go. This this, this the one here. This the one here. I had to find a part of the roast where uh, Richard talks back. So let's see. And even, even uh, 30, 40 seconds as they were. <laughs> and, and the comments were real spoon on the end. The, the man who nobody shit about. <laughs> Uh, was cleaning out toilets, and uh, we found him. Uh, uh, he was making a sandwich. Uh, so, 
it's Tim. It's for the hippie uh, racist. It's like Tom, but it's Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Next to her is what we call Miss Thing. <laughs> I want to stop and say fair use, fair use. I want to let y'all know that when the industry used to do these roles, you know, now, uh, shout out to Relentless uh, No More. Thank you for that super chat. When the industry used to do these roles, it was even on Comedy Central, if y'all remember those, with Flavor Flav, Justin Bieber, all those. That was the industry's way of letting the public know what they do. That was a way of atoning for their sins. It was like a public ritual that they would do. Now they got other stuff that they do, but there was truth in those jokes. So when he said we call Paul Mooney Miss Thane, it's because they were screwing him. He was Miss Thane. What? Y'all got to read between the lines. Paul Mooney was Miss Thane. Paul Mooney tried to great Richard Pryor Jr. Richard Pryor actually went to some mob members and try to plan Paul Mooney's, they, they was going to take him out. And then some happened, and it didn't happen. And he left it alone after that. Like the assassination tip didn't work. But it is a well-known secret that Paul Mooney tried to rape Richard Pryor Jr. And Richard Pryor Jr. is a gay man to this day. I'm not saying rape of mother station calls that. I don't know. I'm not getting into that. I do want to clear something up too about Richard Pryor. He grew up in a whorehouse. Um, he got touched at a very young age. And he was one of those people, I guess today you would identify him as probably pansexual or just sexually fluid. Richard Pryor would have sex with anything, man, woman, dog, he didn't care. Marlon Brando was the same thing, man, woman, dog, mailbox, anything with a hole, he was going to have sex with it. So when I say this shit, a lot of y'all in the comments be stormed. You don't know what you're talking about. Yes, I do. You got to use both your ears. And pay close attention. Pay close attention. <laughs> we call him that with love and affection. <laughs> As all of us know. <laughs> <laughs> well, he hasn't let us down yet, has he? <laughs> we, we've been uh, friends a long time, and uh, uh, I, I sure wish you'd return my red handkerchief. Because <laughs> my wife's been wondering where it was. <laughs> I hope it still has her perfume scent on it. <laughs> But really, uh, Paul, it, it's really been a pleasure working with you because we worked together many years ago on the Red Fox show. We started writing together and we walked into the office with the white man and Paul didn't, uh, didn't, uh, didn't, uh, what he did was suck his dick. <laughs> yeah, I heard what he said. Don't go back. Uh, didn't, uh, didn't. What he did was suck his dick. <laughs> I'm going to play it again. He said Paul Mooney did what? We started writing together. And we walked into the office with the white man, and Paul didn't, uh, didn't, uh, didn't, uh, what he did was suck his dick. <laughs> and that was the roast in 1977. So they was already giving in the window, windows and let us know then, really. So it's just something that's been going on for centuries but because y'all don't see behind closed doors how would you know how would you know <laughs> but, uh, uh, uh. I, I, I must say, I must say, Paul had a sense of humor. He didn't let him come in his mouth. <laughs> he said Paul had a sense of humor. He didn't let him come in his mouth. So, oh, so okay. So he just he sucked he sucked the man's penis, but he, you know he let him come on his face and not in his mouth. Yeah. At least he yeah. had that much pride. I played that to to show y'all. 
this is how they get down in the industry. This is what you have to do if you're going to be in the elites with the elites, right? Um, to keep it real with y'all, like I've told you, you know, I I've never looked at myself as attractive. It's just, it is what it is. But since, you know, going viral on YouTube a few times and, you know, a lot of these people, they know my name, even if they don't want to say my name. I've had many, many married men hop in my DMs. I've had them text this phone through the iCloud. I didn't even know you could text through the iCloud. And they've been, and they be on some free shit. A men that you would never think was like that. I've had them try me on other platforms. You know, you oh, I love the show. And then, especially when, when I first started, I was like, okay, I'm trying to get this celebrity on my show, this celebrity. So I'm going back and forth trying to get them on the show. Then they send me a half-naked picture. Wait a minute. Communication stop. I don't know what you said there for, but communication stop there. I can't tell y'all who, because... uh. I'm just not so gonna... nosy. Y'all know he can't tell you. Not right now, unless they piss us off. You know what I'm saying? Y'all would be mad. Y'all would be mad though. A few of them are uh, what you would call beautiful, like beautiful niggas. Y'all would be mad. What? I you know, know what? one. I know one right now. Y'all, y'all think he is just so attractive. Don't do it to him. Don't do it. Don't do it. And he and he busting down. The uh the the little stylist he look he he loved the little thick feminine uh Asian stylist and you know he was the lead on the ABC show I'm just saying and y'all love y'all love his dirty draw and he's a great looking guy and he looks straight but baby he don't he don't want you he love pussy. Mm -hmm. He can't tell y'all who it is. I can't so tell you who. Look at him trying to guess. No, we ain't going to take. Don't tell me. And, and the way they keep it on the low is that they pay their little boyfriends. They pay their bills. They pay their rent, especially out in L.A. Whether y'all want to realize it a lot, a lot of people out here are just glorified escorts. They just ain't on the corner selling it, but they doing what they got to do to pay their bills. And, and yeah. And, um, you know, when they stop paying your bills, that's when people get exposed. I'm not dropping names. I'm not telling you who, but I, I, I'm not telling you who, but just know if I wanted to go that way, I would already have a, a, a show on television. Know that. I will be being groomed to be the, the next Ryan Seacrest. How, who you think groomed him and got him in? Who groomed him? Dick Clark, allegedly. At one point, they lived together. That's all I'm going to say. And he said what he said the way he said it. And he meant what he said the way he said it. Even if you want to talk about, now I'm going to get into some white news. If you want to talk about Jax Taylor from Band of Pump Rules, some people know who, who I'm talking about, some people don't. Y'all got to remember back in his model days when he lived in Miami, he used to live with an older man who helped him out. Baby, male or female, they selling it in this industry. The majority of your models sell it. That's really how they make their money because most models don't make no money. Most actors don't make no money like that. They selling it on the side. That is the industry. That is how they get deals done. That is how Chris Jenner got deals done. She so and Kim took the brunt of it. Kim Kim laid on her back more than a little bit. And he ain't lying, you guys, because I got offered a, a movie deal. It was a little movie, Go For Broke. That was the name of it. And they want me to check in the, in the shower who got my ass slapped. I wasn't going to get naked. I wasn't going to be standing there. And I'm definitely going to go let no woman come and slap my ass. And I wasn't going to be naked for $25,000. So they would have gave me the $25,000 cash. They had everything laid out. They had their little drugs there and stuff. I don't do that. I would smoke weed before I said this, snuck anything up my nose or put anything in my system. Never have, never will. So there are ways that they do entice you to make you see if you'll go for it. Well, he goes to $25,000 cash right now. All he needs you to do, I didn't even go to be in the uh, movie. I just went with a guy so he could show me what was going on. And as soon as they saw my look, I had blonde hair. They was ready to go for me, and I didn't do it. It wasn't that serious. I, I felt more for myself. You give me twenty five thousand. What you gonna make? And then what you gonna think? I'm finna snort this shit. Whatever this shit y'all got right here. Or you think I'm gonna drink something you done gave me? 
I have my own drink and stuff. I'm not going to take nothing because I don't know what you may slip me. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful. Not saying everybody's in the industry is like that. But Storm is definitely telling the truth. They didn't have to do me but one time. And I didn't want to go to nothing else like that. Point blank, very simple. Because I don't know the after effects. Why, and why you think so many people, they put out one album, you never see them again. You might have seen them in a few movies. And then they leave the industry and they don't want nothing to do with it. And they'll tell you, I don't even want to talk about that part of my life. They'll definitely throw some money in your face. I give you fifteen thousand right now if you. So, hey, listen. Sometimes as a man, you across from an executive that don't want to do you. He wants you. He he will ask you, "Can I suck it, please?" And I give you fifteen thousand dollars. Y'all think now if you a broke actor and you struggling and you living in a studio apartment with six roommates, you are not gonna take that? What you think on? What you think they're gonna do? Yeah, they're gonna do it. They're gonna do it. That's Boom! Right. Now somebody got something to hold over your head. Now you don't know it was a little camera in the corner recording it the whole time. This is why they can never come out and tell their secrets. Right. And this you is why yourself. Exactly. This is why a lot of times they sign those shitty contracts. You're like, why did you sign? Because he went to a party. He drunk yeah. some. He don't even remember what he did, but it's on tape. You got to remember with this industry, they get everything on tape. And they send people to infiltrate. Y'all got to remember, even when I was yep. cool with Tasha K, she sent Chelsea to my house, which I think that was for. They yep. thought me and they, they thought me and Vaughn was screwing. We weren't screwing. When they couldn't find that, then they had to make up some. But I just say that to say, this is how they get down. Go ahead, this. Now, when you were just saying that about Tasha K. It ain't like she no big time ass celebrity, but to be even trying to do something like that. You know what I'm saying? What what's the purpose? At the end of the day, everybody who you see in the industry, they have something on those people. I feel like Mary was a humiliation sacrifice. When they talk about sacrifice, I'm not gonna lie. Even being married to a celebrity, I didn't know about none of this till I got out here and hearing people and watching people for myself. So now I've learned certain things and how I see how people try to protect their image. I would have never thought a man like Steve Harvey would lie on me and say something about me that wasn't true, that could have put me in prison. So nobody could ever tell me that Steve Harvey's not a liar because right now I'm being held accountable for his actions because he's a liar. So you guys can believe what you want to. That's a figment of your imagination. But like, if, if, if something's going to come out of this, they could sue me right now. They're not going to sue me because they know everything we just talked about is true. And on Storm Platform, when I bring something, I want to be totally held accountable for every piece of damn footage that he done put on this website as far as I'm concerned. Because I can bag mine up. Can you? And if somebody, oh, yeah. somebody asked me about taking a lie detector test, Call that storm, call me. We get the shit set up. I'll take the lie detector test on storm show. If that's what you and I'll pass that shit with somebody asked me that. So I told me, yeah, I'll take it. Do you pay for it? We can film it on your show with any question that's asked. I can ask them. I'm gonna pass with clear flying colors. Steve won't, Margie won't, and none of their crew won't. Point blank, very simple. And that's what it is. And everything that Mary said, I hold her accountable because of some fact she's gagged. They say she's gagged, so she's not going to say nothing. They said, I'm gagged, but I'm going to say what I want to say. And if that, that whatever that gag me, you're not going to hold me accountable in a state that I don't live in. Gag my ass in California. Gag me in Georgia. Gag me somewhere where the hell I am. But you're not going to gag me in a state that I don't even have nothing to do with. For what reason? Because you don't want me to tell you and Margie dirty secrets. And there's a lot more about Margie that y'all don't know. Um, with this whole thing with Steve, we'll probably get into another time. But she was lying about a lot of stuff in Mary Harvey's divorce, too. As far as all the things that she collaborated and did, David said she slept with one of the judges to get Steve off. I think that video is out there somewhere. Mary said that Margie was coming out in the judge chamber with her dress pulling it down. So you what she and wiping her mouth. Yeah, okay. What you wiping off your mouth? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now let's. Let's 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 we going we gonna leave off on this, but Etsy, please, because I'm uh I please the next couple of days we gotta get together, get all the audios, everything. Mary, I, I hate to do it to you, Mary, but I got to go. I, I didn't held on long enough, Mary. I, what you want me to do? You better call and tell them. It ain't time, I can do. It's time to put it out there. I'm gonna drop it, and we just gonna let the audios play and play and play 
and play and play. And I want y'all to really know who who a lot of y'all idolize and worship. A lot of people got in my DMs and said, I looked up to Steve. Why are you looking up to an entertainer? Let me look in this camera, my webcam, and tell y'all something. And understand this when I tell you. Your entertainers are not your saviors. Do not idolize us. I'm going to put myself in the two. Do not idolize us. Please. When it comes to an entertainer, they will do or say whatever they got to do to keep the dollar rolling. A lot of y'all let these actors, actresses, music, podcasters now ruin your life and ruin your relationships. Because such and such said, I shouldn't take this in a relationship. And such and such said, this is what a real man is. Meanwhile, you don't know how they live and what kind of life they live in. Meanwhile, Derek Jackson just got exposed for being the complete opposite of what he preached to you. Wake up. Praise God. Amen to that. Find, find Jesus. Please. Discover, discover God. Yah. Not man. Man will always be flawed. And I have to say, Storm speaks some um, real facts because until I had went through all this with the Harvey situation, I knew I knew God, but I really had to find him because some gangster shit was coming out of me that I didn't even know I had. I thought about so many negative things that I could have did to this man's whole family and yep. I could have touched some of his family. I had people call, I had real gangsters calling me saying, Essie, do you need us to do something? But then they was going to come back to me. No, I just don't have to pray about it. That's the only thing I could really say that saved me to pray about it. And right now, if y'all don't know it, I'm in a program called Safe at Home for victims of stalking and domestic violence. And every piece of document that I had, it has Steve Harvey name on it. Y'all don't know who these people are. Believe half of what you see and none of what you hear, unless you're right there to see it for yourself. Point blanket period. I wish you had played that last video storm that I sent you. It was a video I sent you and it was on this, this um, platform called the, the Turf, T-R-U-F-F -F or something like that. Oh but yeah. The guy said that Michael Jordan and somebody else wrote him a letter, and he said that it was all camouflage. Everything that we see before us, my and I, 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 I have mad respect for Michael B. Jordan. I don't feel like he's a liar. I feel like he'll tell the truth about it. That's it. Yeah, this one right. Is that the one? That's the one. Let's get into yeah. it. Let's, let's listen to this, y'all. It said, "Go." You have to go up a little bit, Storm, because he's gonna be reading the letter. You know, with the video. No, the video itself. When you forward it some, it's going to read a letter with Michael Jordan have. Right there. Go back. Yep. Right. Come back up some. Come back. Right there. Right there. To inform you that it's been confirmed by a former assistant to Marjorie that Michael couldn't stand Steve or Marjorie. And he witnessed a lot during the time he was involved with Lori. According to Michael and Marjorie's former assistant, whose name I will not disclose within this email for various and obvious reasons, the Harvey's entire public persona is a facade. When the cameras aren't rolling, they live like total strangers within the home. It Ooh, that's believable, ain't it? Come on, Dave. We was just talking about it. See? Like Ooh. Michael B, come on, spill it. Let's go. Comes across as if they are disconnected on so many levels. Marjorie can be on the other side of the home for days at a time, while Steve would be off doing his own thing. Marjorie has also told people close to her that she can't remember the last time she was intimate with Steve. What? Say it. What? And has joked about it in front of Michael, play staff members of theirs and close friends. There have been full-fledged blown out arguments between Steve and Marjorie for emasculating and ridiculing him in front of close friends, family, and staff members. To my understanding, there was a huge argument that ensued at their home when Steve returned from a speaking engagement. He kicked all of her female friends out of their home and it was all because Steve was made aware that their personal male chef had been in their bedroom. Whoa! My God! Oh! It's getting that. It's getting hot in here. I'm gonna take oh, my gloves off. Oh, Marjorie, you giving that pussy to everybody, girl. The chef, the chef, the judge, the Marines, the court, the the court. here, right there, there, everywhere. Go, go, oh, McDonald, Hannah, e i e i o, yeah, e i e i ho. God, leave Mary. Let me go get a condom and let me tap it too. Shit, if it's all that good, I like older women anyway. Stop it. They know I'm a cougar lover anyway. It is what it is. Let's, let's read that on, Storm. Let's do it. 
Steve was passionately, but yet aggressively shouting to the top of his lungs, asking her why was the chef in their bedroom? He went on to say our bedroom is a sacred place and it's our sanctuary and that there's no excuse for it. But surprisingly, the chef was not fired. Mm. Steve's bodyguard, William Big Boom Freeman, was instrumental and played a significant role in bringing Steve and Marjorie together back in the day. I didn't know that. Come on, come on, come on, come on over to our place. Let's go, Storm. But William knows a lot of Steve's deepest and darkest secrets, including Steve's past of hooking up with men to obtain jobs to boost his Hollywood career. And with that knowledge, William was able to manipulate Marjorie into sleeping with him based off the information he had on Steve. Damn. Say what? You Damn. say what? We said what we said the way we said it, Truth News. Yeah, we said the way we said it. Come on, let's play this guy. That's, that, that's literally verifying everything me and you have said. And that means what? they Why all... So that Why means you're okay? right. They all got dirt on each other, so they can't get rid of each other. Correct. Right before we came on, somebody sent me that video and said, here's the collaboration. And Michael B. Jordan now and, and Margie's sister did this. Yes, yeah, fine. Let's keep on going with this fine. Go ahead, Storm. According to information that has been well documented and provided, Steve is known for giving <laughs> to top Hollywood elite. Oh, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. Lollipop. Yeah. I wasn't ready for that. Oh my. Damn, he put them soup coolers to use, don't he? Leads and business executives. The rumor is true that Steve's bodyguard smashed Marjorie. No matter how much they deny it, no matter what TMZ says or any other controlled media outlet regurgitates, Marjorie has been having an affair with William for quite some time now, and Steve is well aware of it. it Lord have mercy. It just so happens that the information leaked to the public, and the word is, is that Michael B. Jordan and a former assistant to the Harveys are responsible for it. The former assistant has stated that Marjorie and William has spent a lot of time together in the guest house, preferably while Steve was sleeping. Whoa. Come on over to my place. Yeah, okay. Wait, 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 wait. So they did it what? So this is an open marriage at this point. He be getting drunk. I got some videos, some footage of him too, y'all, calling me, talking to him and shit. He be drunk as hell. He be drunk. So when he drunk and he go to sleep and he smoke weed. Tell the truth, Steve. Steve said he smoked that shit good, good too. He said he had Also, he be out. He be yeah, he you know what? And, and to be honest, he works so much he don't hardly sleep. So when he sleep, he's out. Yeah, yeah. That that, that not makes at sense. Home either because you know Mary say he stayed on the road a lot. That's how he was trying to find everything. Let's go. Damn. Marjorie and William also spent a lot of time away from the house as he would accompany her to speaking engagements and business meetings where Steve wasn't always present. Behind the scenes, there is absolute turmoil in the Harvey household. And given the fact that there is no prenup, Steve is forced to play it safe and cool or Marjorie would take him for almost all he has. Ain't no prenup. No prenup. No prenup. No pre. Now, you know what? I, be I, I would be happy to help Steve. To a degree, because I know Margie Raggedy too. All you gotta do is go back because she thinks she gonna get what she gonna get. None of them cats will end up, but they'll be in up paying more bond fare than anything trying to bail to get out of jail. So that's why that's why that's why she's not gonna go anywhere because Steve will pay you to stay. He paid Mary to stay. Did y'all hear that video? Mary said a year later, after he did that to her son, he bought a house. See what I'm saying? Okay. That is insane. Steve is trying to navigate through all of this and strategically put himself in a situation where he doesn't get financially drained by Marjorie, but a divorce is imminent. All right. So you guys just heard that and things of that nature. All right. So shout out to Tough. Shout, shout out to Tough News uh, TV. I'm going to start checking out his uh, channel because I did not know that. Wow. 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 He got wow. that from a Hollywood celebrity source in Hollywood who was affiliated with Margie's personal assistant, I guess, that they fired, and somebody who was affiliated with Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan going to bring the smoke, too. And I believe some of them videos that's coming out has something to do with him. Mad props to you, Michael. I'm glad that you standing up and you ain't letting these people sit up here and do that kind of stuff they've been doing all this time. 
Tell on them. That's what you do. Tell on them. They need to be exposed. You heard what he said. They trying to cover up that about Boom and Margie. We all know she slept with Boom. Why y'all tripping like that? If you all, you know, you all. We ain't gonna say. We won't tell nobody. You ain't hear from us, though. You heard from somebody else. But you know what happened. And what I think happened now, maybe they were still, maybe they were still getting it on. Because it's probably good to get old dingling instead of new dingling. Because he ain't gonna question that old dingling because it's still around you. You see what I'm saying? Right. But so if right. he's still around, Steve, you know what I'm saying? He's naive. He's doing his own thing in the dungeon, dingling dungeon. So he ain't gonna care what Margie do. Mary, I got a video of Mary saying that. Mary said Margie don't care how many men Steve doing because Margie doing men too. Mary said it. Mary said. That's what she said. I didn't say it. I mean, how does she know? Because her son told him. Oh, my now, Lord. Now, this is a live dropping show today. Baby. Now, now, now one, one, one more thing. Let's get into the transgender. Okay, so you can't hear her talking on there, but let me, okay, it's a court papers. Let me see if I can find a court paper or just put the video with it. The transgender woman was affiliated with Steve. You can pull it up. Yeah, so you get the court papers. Get to the court papers, um, Storm. The transgender woman was affiliated with Steve in 2008. And then in 2014, this nigga put a gag order on this girl and put her in jail and had some people, some deputies, oh, jump shoot. on this transgender woman. So I, I asked Mary, was Steve affiliated with this transgender woman? And Mary said, yes. He liked women that were masculine to a degree behind closed doors, such as that transgender, such as uh, Megan. Even though that was a personal assistant, Mary felt like Megan had did something with Steve, too. Just saying. Wow. I mean, everything I'm saying, I said it. Mary said it. So if it's a lie, then Mary said it. But it, to me, it would not be a lie because they don't try to gag her for all these years. If nobody has nothing to lie about, they're not going to continue to try to gag you and put a, a, a muzzle on you to shut you up. The only reason why a person put a muzzle on you try to shut you up is to cover up the truth. So all of it's coming out. And thank Michael B. Jordan for having courage enough to tell it. And everything me and Storm just talked about, that that's place, it just solidified everything. And, and, and Storm, if you want to, where you pull it up at, if you can read that a little bit, it says that she said something and it bruised Steve Harvey's ego. And he got pissed and had her thrown in jail. And he started stalking her and harassing her just like he did me. That's how I knew who he was for sure. And I'm sure it ain't just me and Corlanda Harris. I'm sure it's other women as well, but they're black women. He only go out to black women because he think he has that masculinity too. All right, I can show this. Okay, I can show this part of it. All right, so it says, Steve Harvey hired a private investigator to harass the, un the undersigned without justification of any kind for doing so other than out of malice and spite. In 2008, the tort uh, torpfacer, uh, Steve Harvey, apparently became upset because the undersigned advised him that he was ignorant due to actions that he was engaged in that were directed at the undersigned. There was an attempt to later indicate that the undersigned had bruised his ego because his colleagues were aware of the undersigned statements. As a result, the undersigned has been harassed through the use of illegal actions. During certain instances, the tort Tort for C, I don't know how to say that. Tort Feaser, Tort Feaser has attempted to treat this matter as a joke. The undersigned's landline and cell phone calls have been illegally monitored. Wow. Requiring her to change her phone number multiple times. The activity inside the undersigned's residence and car has been illegally uh, surveyed, along with illegally monitoring the activity on the undersigned's personal computer with unauthorized access to email accounts, financial records, and education records. The tort officer has used multiple media personalities, particularly in radio, as participants in this activity. Same thing <laughs> happened to you. Now. Same thing that happened to you. Yep, exactly. So when they just said that and say Steve used all those different things, he used, he did the same exact thing that Storm saying he did to this girl. But the only thing is she went to jail behind it and they beat her up in jail. And guess what, you guys? Austin and Bird. Austin and Berg is Steve Harvey's attorney, his law firm that he deal with. The judge that was on this case was a prior lawyer from Austin and Berg. And guess what? 
Austin and Bird does cyber, cyber tampering. So they're able to do like cyber showing if somebody's getting stalked. They have that system because that's what they specialize in cyber, cyber stalking, cyber bullying to show what people are doing that. So they would have had access to do this to this girl. And the judge who presided over this case was a lawyer that was in the same law firm that Steve took me to court with. You see what I'm saying? I walked away because I didn't want them to keep harassing my family. But bring your ass back today and see what I do. I, if I got to walk to court, I'm not going to walk away. And at this point, everything else now can be exposed. So they done backed off some. But I got some more stuff to send you too, Storm. And you saw the videos for yourself. Did you or did you not see all the videos? You know what I'm saying? And if we have to take those and put them on Storm Patriot. And then we put a link to it so y'all can see how this man went after me, went after my family, went after my home, went after my friends and stuff. Steve is an evil man, and they continue to allow him to keep doing this. And until someone stops it through the industry, he will continue to feel like he can violate women and people for whatever reason. Somebody he can get over on. He don't do a man like that. He really just do women or somebody he has that masculinity over or he think he can tell them what to do. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, 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 what she mm, said mm. about this warrant SC still has a warrant out yeah they say he still got a warrant out for my rest hey in a minute we and Storm gonna get on this motherfucker and we're gonna be calling the courthouse I'm gonna be calling Collar County y'all tell me what for cause you don't want me talking about Steve I got a $1,500 warrant for my arrest and hell no I'm not paying it cause if I pay it that's saying I'm guilty why would I pay for a warrant in a state that I've never been in so then if I don't pay the warrant or if I did pay it then they are gonna reschedule another court date then if I don't do it they can issue another warrant or bond for my arrest why would I be stupid enough to do that i'm never going to do that i'm not going to give myself up because of steve harvey but if you guys don't learn anything else this is not a joke i'll try to find the um the police report because i do got video footage of them trying to silence me but when that warrant came out i was in court against steve harvey in 2018 that's mm. when that warrant was served so he blackmailing me from a court date and they served me right in the courthouse in front of a judge named judge holly she rolled her eyes and didn't do anything they had told me i got paperwork saying they paid the judge off so if you got money you can pay a judge off watch what's gonna happen with cheryl strawberry hopefully the judge ain't crooked but they probably pay that judge off too so y'all think he is because he's on family feud he is a black man who do shit behind closed doors who was ordered to take anger management and he's still doing the same stuff look how he talked to um um the, the letters that storm was writing i mean all the stuff storm just read look how steve harvey demeanor was look how he talked to his kids look how he talked to a woman he got pregnant and he was married y'all he ain't who y'all think he is i've had enough of him and it doesn't matter if he say something didn't happen he's a natural born liar he's gonna say it didn't happen maybe some of y'all bloggers need to call steve harvey and say yo steve did you say S extorted something? There's an article said I extorted something. What did I extort? Can we get the proof to that? Stop believing what these these um, media outlets tell you. Media outlets work with networks. Networks work with media outlets. If it's ABC, you think ABC gonna make, if Steve on ABC, you think the ABC news is gonna make Steve look bad? Hell no, because he on ABC on Family Feud. So ABC ain't gonna say nothing about him. It's all to click together, you guys. It's for you to put your mind to where it should be at. And as Storm say, stop idolizing all these celebrities. You better idolize God and know what you're really doing for real. For and real. For real. Anthony, I don't know what your time is looking like, but what's your time looking like? I don't know. It's time to go, ain't it? What's time? We just feel too much. It's no, no, no. It's, 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 it's up to you. If you want to take some questions, we can real quick. It's up oh, to you. Can take some questions. Yeah, we can take some questions. Let's okay. do it. Okay, cool. If there's any questions. And I hope that Storm like gave y'all a better synopsis. You know what's going on. Because they said it didn't happen, don't mean it didn't happen. And all I'm saying is you cannot believe a liar. Point blank, period. Point blank, period. But what are you gonna give me some questions? You're gonna get the people to ask me questions. No, so what I do is I pin the link so they can come up and then they can ask the question. Okay. So the link is pinned in the chat. All right. 
Uh, my Patreon is being uh, listed in the actual chat as well. You can also just become a member of this channel, and then you'll have access to the same information because we're going we gonna to put everything out now. So I want all the audios on YouTube and a lot of those stalking videos. Whatever I can't put on YouTube will be on Patreon. Okay. And also, you guys, I put a link down there because they asked for my little my site. But I guess it's Civil Rights Act to Essie Bear. If not, when we get off, I'll put the link at the bottom of it. And my thing is, I have no shame in anything that I speak about. If you ask a question, only thing I can do is say what I know. If I don't know it, I'll say I don't know. And but I can't do no, I can't do no but respect that. Did Steve do anything to Lori? Not that I know of, but they relationship seem a little off to me. I'm going to see if I can share some videos of text messages. And it was a picture of Lori dressed in the bedroom, but Steve was then have his shirt and shit on. And he was over her shoulder like, see, that, that picture made me feel very uncomfortable. So I'm not sure if he did, but I always thought in the back of my mind, he might have did something to her. Wow. Oof. Oof. I think their relationship is a bit off, too. They say he got a new show. He's a judge. Y'all know damn well Steve ain't no judge. Yeah, it's, it's like comedy hits on Hulu. But then you guys, all this that went on, I guess it'll be all in God's time when something um, settles or whatever the case may be. But it ain't like no real judge show. It's more of um, him joking. Like, a, like yeah, a comedy. Yeah, but I believe he that was like an endo window at me. Yeah, bitch, I got me a comedy show. And I mean, a comedy judge show. Now you can't touch me. You can't touch me. Because I'm already anointed by God. You can be touched, though, because the more we get out here, the more y'all will know for yourselves. But one thing that I don't do, and the storm know that, everything we talked about, we got information to back it up. So bring your best if you're going to bring your A game, because that's the only thing you can bring to me. You can't bring nothing else. They say, can you talk about the Bernie Mac beef? I don't know a lot about the Bernie Mac beef. I know that Mary used to ride on the tour bus with them. And Mary used to be back there with with him in the back. So even though they was with him in the Thank back you, or whatever Mary. the case, oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Even though they were in the back of the bus, Steve would come back there and catch Mary and Bernie Mac in the back. They and then then people, I said this before. I didn't say Mary slept with Bernie Mac. I said Bernie Mac was on the back of the bus with Mary. Mary was married to Steve. If they did something, I didn't know. But Mary said he smelled good as hell, and she liked the way he smelled. You go figure. So I'm sure somewhere along the line, that made Steve a little bit uncomfortable. And with this, um, the Ocean 13 thing, when he tried to get that from behind Bernie Mac's back like that, Mary said that was the most hurtful thing that Bernie Mac had experienced. When Steve actually tried to really go and steal the show, from behind Bernie Mac and knowing that it was Bernie Mac movie. So after that, him and Bernie Mac didn't look the same or they didn't deal the same. They even had beef when they was going on tour to the point that they didn't want to be around Steve and everybody was going their own separate ways. Don't y'all wonder why the tour didn't keep on going? That should have been a traditional thing. It wasn't traditional because Steve kept sitting up here trying to backstab people and lie. And D.O. Hughley know it all. D.O. Hughley probably the main one to tell everybody what time it is. Cedric going to be a little bit of modest because he don't want that, that back after last. But Steve, I mean, D.O. Hughley, he know what time it is. He know that Steve didn't care for Bernie Mac. And somebody said that Steve gave Bernie Mac a cup of lemonade. I got the shit in the text, so let's don't play those games. And like two weeks later, he was sick, and then after that, he died. Now, I don't know what was in the lemonade, but they were all on tour together, and he personally brought Bernie Mac a thing of lemonade. Why? Why you didn't bring everybody else no thing of lemonade? I'm just saying. Mm. What's going on, Ashley? Hey, Storm. Hey, Bessie. Ba- I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I have a question. So, since Marjorie really don't want to be with Steve and Steve don't want to be with Marjorie. Why you do why you think she hasn't left him yet being that there is no prenup and she re- basically will be winning if she did leave him because she got she got just as much information on her, you know, on him as he does on her. So and seem like me she got the upper hand. So why you think she's still sticking around? Because she could go to jail because what's in that divorce decree in, in Texas, if that divorce is decree is unsealed, 
Margie was in that divorce decree lying herself. They had money that they could not account for. I thought it was drug money. And they put what they call a squash motion against Margie. That means that she can't speak about anything that happens in that divorce. But if she speaks out and they open that divorce back up in Texas, she's going to jail and Steve's going to jail too. It's going to cause a bigger confusion. So you might as well shut up and stay where the money's at. Because either way, if she walks, she's going to jail too. Because he can expose everything she did in that court paperwork. So it goes both ways. So they're both, they both got stuff on each other from, from the time they start sleep with each other back in the day. Mm -hmm. so she has no choice but to stay loyal to Steve. Because if not, then Steve is gonna, it's all gonna come out about the, what they did in the divorce decree. It is is there's no way it's not gonna come out. Okay. That's that was my only question. Okay. Thank you, Ashley. Have okay. a good one. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, y'all, y'all got to understand, when it comes to wealth and wealthy couples, they will stay married just to not break up the, the it's a status thing. It it's go yeah, and it's going somewhere, and I'm Mrs. Harvey. Like, that me that means something. Uh, shout out to Lorraine. You uh, became a YouTube member. Thank you so much. Uh, that sounds like Will and Jada's marriage. Exactly. Now, somebody said, too, are they really married? Like, I found it very strange that Steve divorced Mary in 2005, and then after 2007, they got together. But I saw a video where they saying that Marge and Steve was together in 2005. They were actually together in 2003, and before that, too, they were together in the 90s. They just kept it on the down low. So... For them to be lying about it, nobody's going to tell the truth who did what. But if we were to really go back and sit and break those days down with Storm, I could break all them days down and tell you who cheated, how they cheated, and which way they cheated. The first time Mary found out that Steve um, was cheating, she got a knock on the door. She was in New York, and she got a letter saying that this girl, Terry, was pregnant. Steve didn't even know Mary had got the letter. It was on Mary's anniversary. So she was getting ready to fly to go meet Steve, I guess in 94 or something like that, and got the knock mm. on the door saying that somebody was pregnant by Steve, and Steve never knew Mary even knew. So he had been cheating for a long time. If you really want to know the truth, when Mary said that the first wife called and said, are you pregnant by Steve? Mary should have ran in, and she did. Yeah. She didn't. So basically, Mary knew, too, that Steve was married. He had got somebody pregnant, and she stayed. I mean, is it that good that y'all going to have to stay with a cheater and a liar? I'm just saying. They said, why get half when you'd be paid for life in four years? Why even do that when you can just wait until the nigga die and get everything? Well, at this point, she ain't going to leave him because they got too much to lose. Yeah. There is no prenup. And in those divorce papers, when I said it's a whole lot of corruption in those Texas, Collins County, McKinney, Texas, it's a whole lot of conspiracy and collusion in there. And if it come, Margie said that she was taking care of Steve. Margie said she had an ambulance service and her money was taking care of Steve. Steve said he was broken. He couldn't pay Mary. That was in 2005. That's just in those divorce decrees. How is that possible? Then Margie, if you got an ambulance service, where did you get the money from to open the ambulance service? So all that's in those divorce decrees. That's why I made sure that I remembered everything I need to remember just in case they try to do something to my computer or anything like that. So Margie got a whole lot of lies in that divorce decree showing where she's supposed to have money and property. How did you get it? Who gave you the money? Where did it come from? Was it drug money? See, those are the things that people should be asking since she's claiming that. Uh, let's see. What was Marjorie's profession before Steve? <laughs> a queen pen. Marjorie has never held a job anywhere. They said Mar Michael B. Jordan got out of that fast, and that's a good thing, yes. Because he was nervous. He didn't he he knew who Steve was. He saw who all of them was. They had him, he had to write something saying, I ain't gonna tell what go on. Why do I gotta write something saying I ain't gonna tell what go on in your house? Then don't do no crooked shit. And I ain't gotta sign nothing. For what reason? Let's see. <laughs> they said she was a hustler, yeah, something like that. I mean, I mean, she got it honestly. 
Hey, y'all know they say Essie got a track record. I got a track record of telling the truth. And I got a track record of exposing people who come at me. And I got a track record for people who lie on me. That's what I got a track record for. Because y'all, if y'all don't say something and somebody do something to you, then they're going to continue to do it to you. I got videos with Monique too calling me out my name. I checked Monique ass. She ain't stepped in the plate. Where she at? I'm going to check her too. Mm-mm-mm. Thoughts on how Steve did, Monique. How did Steve really do, Monique? When she was going through that stuff with Netflix, he told her to coon and told her to uh, just take it and just apologize and just be a doormat. And even though Monique was in the right, you know, Steve didn't stand up for her. Monique felt like Steve hung her out the dry, but Steve hangs everybody out the dry. Right. And then I, I, I lost bad respect for Monique because I have videos that I'll send you, Storm, where they took pictures of Monique's face. And they had her face in there calling me bitches, sluts, and hoes. This one is these videos where they had like eight um, websites on YouTube that was stalking me. And Monique's face was on something calling me out my name. We go to Monique's page, my people over there. They said, Monique, your face is on videos calling Essie out her name. Sugar, baby, okay, let me go check it out. I'll call Essie Barry. She ain't did shit. She didn't say mm. nothing. So how do I have respect for somebody who you let use your face to sit up here and stalk me? You want to say you're a righteous woman for black women and I sent it to you and you didn't do nothing? I lost mad respect for Monique after that. I don't like her, not like her, but just to know that her face was on videos trying to stalk me and call me out my name and knowing that Steve Harvey was behind it because I told her and other people told her and she didn't do nothing. Really. They didn't do nothing until I went to court and sued. And then when I went to court and sued, I was able to copy the videos to make sure that they couldn't lie and say they weren't there. So I got one with Monique on it too. I just didn't like what she did. And Monique ain't trying to go head to head with me. I dare her on any level. I challenge Monique on any level, comedy or straight. You ain't trying to come for a sister like me. Mm -mm. Uh, they say we in Baltimore do not claim Monique. You know what? Oh, child, I'm glad don't because she, to me she be cooling a little bit too. Because really. Shit, what 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 is she actually going to say with Steve Harvey for? What was that whole interview for? Nothing. What yeah, just would... what? that I'm mad at you, Steve, for what you did. Well, Monique, I'm mad at your ass for what you did. So now the scale's even. Because you you're not a person of your word either. When she saw that, she should have called me and she didn't. Nisi says the Marjorie lied and really didn't have a family owned cleaner sir. No, nah, she ain't had no cleaners. So where'd she get the money from? But that's in but that's in the court documents, that's Mary case in, in Texas, that's in there saying that she had to help Steve pay his bills and she had that service, a cleaning service and an ambulance service. How did she get the money? That's all I want to know. If Steve was broke and she had companies, how did she get the money? What was her name, a house in her name in 2003? What was the purpose? Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, she didn't finish college. Oh, she didn't. Uh, okay. They said, Storm, I was wondering when you was going to bless us with your roast and critique. <laughs> Don't he do it, y'all? He do it real smooth. Like, that's a nice, nasty. Then. Nice, but nasty. It's nasty. They said a cleaning services was a front for drug operations. Yeah. Mm. And I, yeah. And that's why they scared. If they open that court document back up, they're going to find all that. And I want to acknowledge something else because someone asked me. Someone seen a video where Steve was talking about um, the IRS. I sent some documents to the IRS that showed that Steve was fraudulent about three years ago. So maybe that's why they're coming out with the IRS shit right now. Oh, I wow. sent them show where Steve had embezzled money. And the man in her Chicago, the accountant who died, he's the one who told me. And see, like, right after that man told me all the shit that Steve had did, hiding money through other accounts and trust. That's where the money is hidden. And trust accounts. Trust accounts is almost like you can't trust the money. I mean, you can't touch the money. That accountant in Chicago, who is dead now, where Steve said it was $22 million, it was way more than that that he hid. It was more than that that he embezzled. With him and Margie together, they should already be up on investigation for that situation. He had a $20 million penthouse in, in Trump Tower. $10 million. 10, I got that too. I got that too. 
So when, even when y'all see him go shake Trump's hand, it didn't even matter if he had shook Trump's hand because he had a $10 million condo in Trump Tower. And Margie used to go up there and visit him while he was married to Mary. Go mm, tell mm, it. Mm. Go tell it. Mm -hmm. And that's why they don't want me to talk because they know I know the tea. Because Mary told me. The store up in the blast y'all out now. It's all going to be released. A uh, question: What about Lori and Diddy? Did the why did the mother stop that relationship with Lori and Diddy? I don't know. Cause Diddy, Diddy was an older man, and Lori, it was just for to the you know what I'm saying. Diddy was an older man. What could he really offer her? She already didn't mess with him and the son. You get what I'm saying? And she was being investigated with some other stuff, you know. And even with the the soccer player that um, Lori was married. No, Lori was going in the beginning. She was pregnant by that soccer player. Are you um, talking about Memphis? She was pregnant by him. Is that how she did? She sacrifice her baby too. Uh, Winter told Mary. Mary said that Winter told her that she was pregnant by that guy, but she didn't want the baby, and they did it on the low key so nobody would know. Go call Memphis. Go call Winter, and go call Mary. So when they say you be sacrificing people and babies, and I don't know nothing about that. But it's sure funny that we just found out about that's him. I know that's who him. It was. Oh, and I heard he really cared about her. She was pregnant at the time. Is that right? That's what they said. She was pregnant. She aborted the baby, and they didn't want nobody to know. Please sue me so I can tell some more. Is that him? That was him. Really. I will. I will say though, Lori is a has a very pretty face. I would definitely say that. Lori is a beautiful young lady. I have no flaws with Lori. You just shouldn't take after your mama, and you should preserve your body. Period. And at the end of the day, you know your body is your temple, so you should be able to be able to conserve yourself with that. I'm not sure what Margie taught her, but to be going out here with all these celebrities and stuff and sleep with them is really not a good look. And I think that's why she had to slow down some. Cause she started looking like she had horse tendencies. I mean, I mean, that's what it looked like, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I mean, if I was gonna be a hoe, I'm gonna be a good one. And I'm telling you, you gonna pay me for it. And then I can call myself a high price paid um, escort. But I'm not just gonna sleep with you and get what and have what. You know what I'm saying? You might as well be in a relationship. She didn't want to be in a relationship. She said, make sure. Margie say, make sure that they know you are the prize. The prize of what? Mm. The prize of what? Because you still let Steve treat you any kind of way. And then I do believe that Steve had Margie doing sexual favors. She came out of a judge chamber, wiping her mouth. Mary said it. I got the video out there. And she's pulling her dress down, coming out the judge chambers. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-mm. -hmm. So Mary said she looked like she wanted to jump. Mary wanted to rush Margie after she seen that. Mary said she was sitting up there. I said, was anybody surprised when Margie walked out to Judge Chambers? Mary said her. Mary was the only one surprised. Everybody else knew Margie was in the Judge Chambers. And that was the tacky part. The court had started, and Margie came out the Judge Chambers. Where did they do that at? How, how did that even happen? They all need to be up on investigation. Mm, mm, mm. And boom, I'm not uh, sure if I'm gonna say anything or not because Steve got stuff on boom too. And and boom, be said, I'll send it to you. Got some footage on that where they saying that boom was a pimp, right? So they saying that boom used to bring Steve to women. Oh, that, that makes sense. But claim that's bot ain't that ain't that spool that shit did that? Because if you a pimp. You gonna want to know where to get the women from. That's the shit they don't want you to know. Boone was a pimp, and he would hook with Steve over the women. So is that how you met Margie? Pimp. Mm. Truth be told. Truth be told. That makes more sense, don't it? And when somebody told I said, that makes more sense. Because if he's a pimp, and he was Steve as a bodyguard, you the pimp is going, hey, I know some hoes, but you want to get this tonight? You need a sip, you need a rub, you need a lick. And boom, gonna turn them on to that. Mm. That's true. And the apple don't fall too far from the tree. Nobody's trying to discredit nobody. Nobody's trying to talk about Lori. I think Lori's a beautiful person, but if you ask me a question, I'm gonna tell you the truth. That's all I can say is what I, I feel. At the end of the day, it's not what you say, it's always what you can prove. Nobody can come and show any difference in what I said 
And if you do bring it, bring this to a platform, I'll challenge you. And I and I can guarantee you, I know 100 percent I could put five million dollars up on it right now. Don't think the fuck I could come up with if I needed to. Just saying that Steve Harvey will not come up on the internet with me. Steve Harvey won't sit on no, not one platform with me. Mm -mm. No. Put your money up. Put your money up. Put your money up. I did. He's not going. I have one person that he will never step foot in. He would lose his money. That's what that's what should be a good show. Make that nigga put that money up. They'll lose their money because he's not going to sit on the platform with Essie Berry because he know he's done. Because he'll stumble. He ain't got the right people in his team. They said uh, Steve Harvey said on his show that a bodyguard pointed Marjorie Harvey out to him at a comedy show. That was Boone. That was Boone. So what made Boone? So did Boone sleep with her after he pointed out or before? That's the question we need to know. Did you sleep with Mar 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 Margie before you pointed her out to Steve? Or when Steve went on his about his business, did you go get the cootie then? After Steve couldn't get it right at that moment. How did that work? Did you get the cootie before he introduced you or after he introduced you? Or before Boone points you out? When did you and Boone get into it? When did y'all have y'all little escapade? When he was a pimp? Or was he was he coming to get dope for, for his hoes? That's all I'm saying. How did Boone work his way in there? See, those are all the secrets that everybody got that nobody's going to tell. And one person that knows his all his secrets is a guy named Ricky Anderson. Ricky Anderson is an entertainment lawyer, but he had a married divorce. He is the most ruthless nigga I've seen before in my life. And if you go back and look at the smoking gun, Steve Harvey con job, It'll tell you every law that Steve and that man broke, but they're still walking free. Somebody mm. said it's a man world. It's a man world because you allowed it to be a man's world. When we as women start having our voices and stop letting people harass us or punk us, then we can have that same acknowledgement and voice as well. I'm not going to let somebody put a crime on me that I didn't commit. I'm not going to do that. Point blank. Point blank, period. Period. Uh they see da, 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 da. why I get the feeling that Boom and Marjorie are working together. Ooh. To do what? Yeah, right. To do what is the question? <laughs> to what? I make Margie richer or they gonna knock Steve off or whatever. <laughs> tricky Rick, tricky <laughs> Ricky. You know That's what? the thing, tricky Ricky, because he do a lot of doggish paperwork. Matter of fact, he was Monique's attorney at one time. Go figure. Now she looking at Steve, but you got the same lawyer Steve got. Yeah, okay. I'm looking at you, Crooked, too. Mm, mm, mm. They said, Steve, legal and PR team are watching. Get some blessed oil and pray over yourself. I'm serious. They can watch. They can call. They can place threats. You can do whatever you want to do. I've been down this road with Steve Harvey 10 years now. What is he going to do? You want to file a lawsuit? Go file it. File it for whatever you want. I'm going to be ready for you like we coming. I'm not going to say nothing that's not true. And I know his PR people are watching because they told the course they were watching. When I went up there and found out that that restraining order got dismissed on Steve, I had got a three-year restraining order against him. I'm going to pull that and give it to you, Storm. I okay. had a three-year restraining order against Steve. It was only on him for six months. After six months, he went into court, gave a fraudulent address, where I didn't live and had me serve those documents. I didn't find out to the day before court that I was supposed to go to court against the restraining order. And then the people was like, well, judge, she's saying stuff about Steve Harvey. And she said, this, so what? That let me know that Steve Harvey and his attorneys were watching me. And so what? I, I mean, I'm going to say what I feel. And what you going to do? Go pay another judge off? Nobody cares because at this point now, it's a battle. It's a war. May the best person win. But mm. Steve Harvey can't win against me. And he got mad when I got that restraining order against him. Six months. That was the freest I felt for him for them six months. And right after that restraining order got dismissed, he started back making videos and threatening my life. Lord, have mercy. That, that's the things that people should know. Why is that happening? How is it that Steve is able to slip in and threaten a civil rights activist because I told the truth about him beating on women, uh, beating up um, on, on Winton? Come on now. And Mary said he tried to snatch her up a couple times too. He even Ooh. threatened to kill Mary and slash the tires. Mary said it. She said it. Go get her. And Mary threatened to leave her several times. And Steve turned around and threatened her and said, baby, I'll buy you a house. I'll give you the cars. 
Let me hit you right here. Let me give you right this, baby. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. That's the same way he doing Margie. That's the same way he doing Margie. That's the same way he doing Margie. Oh, oh, Nora, she got to turn us off in the oh, background. Oh, Nora, she got to turn us off in the background. Okay, I'm going to let him get that together. Let's see. Yeah, he probably got us on TV. Yeah, he probably got us on TV. Hey, Norris. Hey, Norris. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, you got to turn us off in the background. Can you background. hear me? You got to stop in the background. Wait a minute. I'm on my tablet. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's it's, it's still it's like a it's echoing still, in like the back. You got to open tabs tab somewhere. Tab somewhere. Okay, hold on. You might have to put me back on. Let me let me get go out and come back in. Okay. All right. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay, so let me emphasize something because people be hitting me up when we first son first came on. There's a phone number at the top. So if you got any questions, you can text that phone number and I will get the text. It goes to my email or you can email me at bornagainversion53 at gmail.com. I'm here to tell people, I hear people say, S, you need a podcast. I'm not a, I'm not a blogger. I'm not, and I'm not none of that. I'm a civil rights activist and I fight for justice. YouTube was my only outlet to clear my name and to be able to tell people the truth. But if that's what I inspire you as, then so be it. Because one voice can make a difference and one voice can make a change. So at least share the video if you really want to do a difference. Don't be just sitting on a platform trying to get all this juice and get educated, but you ain't going to do nothing about it. And especially all these women who have heard me validate who Steve is and we done showed you proof of who Steve is. And as a woman, think about put yourself in the same place as Mary or put yourself in a place as me. I had to move out my home, you guys, because this man was stalking me and harassing me so much. It was bad. You know what I'm saying? And one person that lived with me to know that was my bodyguard. He could tell you from A to Z when Steve drove cars, pulled up in front of my house, threatened wow. my life, took pictures and was sending the pictures to my phone number. So they outside my house taking pictures of my house and sending it to my phone. I forgot what kind of car he drove up with one night. It was some kind of Cadillac, a black Cadillac, daring me to come outside. I wanted the nigga to come up to my door. These are the things that we as women have went through. But if I hadn't told you guys, if I hadn't had this platform, a Geneva platform, then I wouldn't have been able to speak my truth. And the reason why I don't jump on everybody's platform, because you're not going to take my sorrow and make money off of it. And I'm trying to change something and make a difference. I'm not on this platform just to say something, to be saying it. I stand with my voice alone because I know that I'm telling the truth. And when I tell my truth, I'm telling my truth that hopefully God forbid that Steve will never be able to do another woman like he has done me and all the corrupt people that are affiliated with this situation like Angela Tucker in Collins County. She need to be investigated. Anybody from Texas who is hearing this, y'all y'all say something about Angela Tucker. She shouldn't be in office on any office because of some fact she will take payouts behind closed doors. Judge Dry Judge Dry took a payoff in Collins County to take Winton from Mary when he mm. got abused. Hello, Mr. Tony. How are you? Hi. Hi, Miss Barry. Hi, how are you? Can y'all hear me? We can. Yes. Yeah, I like both of you together. Y'all are amazing together. And Storm, out of all the people you interviewed, she's my favorite one. Oh, nice. Thank you so much. Yeah. You are so sweet. Thank you. You, you welcome. I want to know, is there any more incriminating um, evidence you have on any other celebrities like the Norwoods? <laughs> um, we, yeah, not really somewhat. Ray J. I go just say Ray J. And some stuff that went down with Whitney. We're going to be exposing that um, as far as that's concerned. We want Willie Norwood to come forth and say, like, why he was not a good father. The only reason why I took the case is because, like, we all watch Willie Norwood, right? We watch Brandy. We watch Family Business. I really had mad respect for him. But to know that he hadn't took care of his kids, no, it don't work that way. But some things have been brought up about Ray J and Whitney Houston the night she passed away. I'm going to keep that. But it's some stuff that Ray J was involved with that they're saying he was affiliated with when it happened. 
Mm. Mm, it's juicy. We'll leave that there. A yeah. Anything else, uh, Norris? Um, and then Richard Pryor, I heard he did something to Pam Greer to cause her not to have children. I wonder, is that true? Oh. I don't know about that one. She ain't yeah. got no kids. Pam, they don't have any children. Oh, no. Let me see. No. Really? Not the, you know what? Thank you. Because, uh, yeah. because of the celebrity industry, Mr. Tony, it's so much that I'm learning from behind closed doors. Y'all look so tall compared to me. Let me see if I get up there like, y'all damn, y'all look all tall. Um, it's so many things that have been going on in the celebrity world. That, you know, I can't say what's not a lie, what's the truth right now. But, I mean, I might can find out. I didn't know anything went on with Pam Greer. But it was so much, like, of the sexual activities, from what I understand, back in the day and stuff that's going on, they're just exposing it right now. Because mentally, a lot of people were affected by it, but so many people couldn't tell it. I would have been telling it. I would still been singing right now. But everybody's not like me, Mr. Tony. And I really want to thank you for that compliment, too. I really appreciate you saying that about me and Storm. I thank you. Oh, yeah, you yeah you're very welcome. You're very entertaining. And I um, subscribe you. to your, your channel. Thank you so much, Mr. Tony. And look forward to seeing more from you, too. Yeah, Ooh. you too. And, I have, and I'm full of 2000. You what? Nice, nice. You said what, Tony? I'm four. I'm four. Subs, I'm four subs away from two thousand. All right. Well, y'all. Hey, y'all go on Tony page now. Y'all start hooking them up, getting them likes and subscribes for Mr. Tony up there. Maybe go get on there with Mr. Tony and get his views up for him. <laughs> y'all do that. For thank sure. you. Thank you, Norris. Thank you for taking my call, and you both have a wonderful night. And I hope to see you on the um, Storm Show more often. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, they right. just my heart. They be making me Oh, yeah, Norris, though. Norris is dope. Yeah, I uh, seen that before. Oh, 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 oh. Hold on, hold on. Let me show my business. Hold on, hold on. Wrong tab. Uh, There we go. Okay. Norris one line. Hold up. I'm going to read this to you. What? Bring out the facts, baby. So you probably did something foul to her. So, so, okay, so um, Pam Greer and Richard Pryor dated from 1975 to 1976. She broke up with him because of his drug use, right? Mm. She wrote about how a visit to her doctor led to her breakup with Pryor. Her physician had told her about a medical condition involving a buildup of cocaine residue around her cervix and in her vagina. What? Her doctor asked if Richard dipped his genitals in cocaine before he had sexual intercourse, both oral and vaginal with Greer. She refuted that claim. She said, not that I know of. It's not like he has a pile of cocaine next to the bed and he dips his penis in it before we have sex. He <laughs> then asked if perhaps Pryor was doing coke before going to bed and Pam said it was a possibility. Oh my God, the doctor said, according to her memoir, we have a serious problem here. If he's not putting it directly on his skin, then it's worse because the coke is in his seminal fluid. The doctor then wondered if her mouth ever went numb while having oral sex and Pam agreed. And she said she felt Novocaine-like effects. What? So, so either, he dipped your his, answer. either he dipped his penis in cocaine before they had sex, which is a thing that some that, that's actually um an abuse tactic. Cause even when I worked in CPS, a lady like tested positive for cocaine when she had her baby. And she also had an abusive boyfriend. So when we got to investigating, he was of course abusive towards her, but he was dipping his penis in cocaine before they had sex. That caused her to test positive, the baby to test positive on top of him beating. It, it was a mess. So it is a thing. But the doctor said he either did that or he did so much cocaine that it was in his semen. 
that's a lot. That's, that's, that's why you gotta know who you are sleeping with because Ooh. you don't really know what you're gonna get. That's just like women, unless you know your man, you doing oral sex and stuff. You, I know you know y'all can get herpes, gonorrhea, you can get any of that in the mouth, right? Because I know a girl who got that in her mouth from sucking on a dude. So you better be careful when you put your lips somewhere because you really don't know what you're getting unless you're a person involved with this man. You should think. So Pam Grier didn't have no kids because of that. Isn't that deep? No, nah, no, nah, I don't know if she didn't have no kids because of that, but that's just that's that 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 was that's I'm gonna have to research that, see what it affects you and and what kind of way, you know what I'm saying? Because that's Ooh. drug your list up. See, you'll never know when people start putting out questions. That's what y'all want to do. You want to be able to go back and be able to research it. So that article came out all that time ago until Storm just did this. People would have never even knew. Come on now. Oh, they said yes. It made her barren. They said yes. See? Wow. If, I mean, if, if, it'll, make your, if it'll make your mouth numb, it should make a coochie numb and everything in there too. Thank you, beautiful. Uh, y'all doing uh, it. Thank y'all. Dang. And they wasn't it. I would be I would, I would be ready to choke him out. She went with him, but nothing but nothing but a year, and that nigga ruined her chances of having children. But when she was warned by the doctor, you still kept going back. You know what I'm saying? What happened in between there? We might have to get Pam on and ask her. You know what I'm saying? That's something I don't very rarely see her on any blogger shows doing. But see, that's why I say you guys believe half what you hear and none of what you see on you unless you see it by yourself. They said, I believe that because she also has cervical cancer. Well, you know, that also comes that comes from HPV as well. And um, I explained to y'all about HPV. Most people have it. It affects women worse than men. It can cause genital warts or throat cancer, anal cancer, uh, cervical cancer. Um, most of the times your body clears it, but certain strains your body cannot get rid of. And then, you know. Y'all go to the doctor, get pap smears, and then they want to make sure it's not cancerous. It's a whole thing. Yeah, rap. Uh, let me see this guy right here. He said, uh, where that, where that comment go? Rap said something. He said that, that she did something freaky with it, that, that he did something freaky with the cocaine, and that's why I went like that. Well, if you put it on your dingling, that's freaky. If you put it in your mouth, that's freaky. You know what I'm saying? Any of that's freaky, and then you stick it up in somebody, all oh, that's freakiness. You know what I'm saying? That's a little too freaky for me, especially when your coochie gonna go numb. I mean, I don't understand, but okay, if that's your thing, that's your thing. I don't want to have nothing that's gonna make my mouth go numb, or I think I might have a heart attack or anything like that. That's why I never did no drugs. Have I smoked marijuana before? But sure, I'll eat an edible and shit right now. But as far <laughs> as anything else, mm -mm, mm -mm. never did no mm -hmm. high, no no strong drugs like that. Let's take a couple more, and then I gotta. Uh, I actually gotta go. Let's go. Let's do it. Couple, couple more. Y'all make these questions good. Y'all better make them good. And hello, everybody. Welcome, everybody, again, who joined us. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. They can come with the questions, don't they? Oh, they said they dipping in cocaine to make the dude last longer. Wow. What? The ding -a -ling? So if you dig the ding -a -ling, and is that right? Is that but, right? But you can buy, I, I mean, they may not, not have had this in the 70s, but even now I can go in the sex store and buy spray to numb myself to help me last longer. I don't have that issue, but I'm just saying. Well, what, what's up with that? So if you numb it, you ain't feeling nothing. So how does that work? I mean, it's more for the woman than the man. As a dude, you really can't feel it, but you're able to last longer to please her. And by the time it wears off, then I guess, you know. What? Yeah. What? Yeah, they, yeah, they got that. They also got the spray for the throat so the woman or whoever can perform oral sex without gagging. It'll coat the throat and desensitize the throat. Yeah. What's up? You sure know an awful lot, but y'all, I'm ready to interview Storm. Tell me y'all both, because I want to put Storm in the hot seat. Don't y'all want to see that interview? I'm ready to put him, baby. I'm going to put him all the way in the hot seat. That's a little bit too much. Coat your throat. How you know it coat your throat? Okay, you okay. Give it to somebody that coat they throat. Because did you just happen to read about that story? Do tell. Because <laughs> you have to understand, like a lot of people, they have gag reflexes, and you know, um, sometimes you want the person to deep throat the whole thing, and you want to go. It's like a certain part of the throat where you want it to go all the way in and just like hang in there, and it, it feels How really. Do you know that? I don't know nothing. I'm just saying. 
blood. I don't know nothing. Um, Cause that's a, he said, take the coat and then you say, do the fragrance. Yes, the yeah. So, so you know, just, you know, just like when you're sick, you take the chloroceptic, you spray it in your throat. Yeah. It, it's the same, it's the desensitizing spray and it literally coats the throat. Now they got something that states like strawberry, watermelon, grape, whatever your thing is, but it'll literally relax your throat and you won't even have a gag reflex until it wears off of course yeah, um right. sometimes it's necessary like if you've got a real bad gag reflex if you want a deep throat or if you're dealing with an exceptionally large penis what you say and look how he named all the flavors y'all mm -hmm. grape strawberry y'all saw him name all the flavors i'm listening now <laughs> i can't wait i put them in a hot seat Grape, strawberry, all the flavors. Okay. Next. Next. They said it's called Great Head. Yeah, they got many different names for it. Bird, how you know? Yeah, Great Head Bird. Okay, Bird. Bird says it's called Great Head. Okay. Bird says she know too. Well, y'all just innocent me. I'm innocent, Essie. I'm the good guy. I believe you too, especially when you know all the damn flavors go with it. I ain't never, I'm 53 years old. I ain't never heard that before in my life. But okay, deep throat, okay, okay. And the grape, strawberry, raspberry, chocolate. Is that right? See, y'all go maybe research a car, deep throat. And look at Miss Bird. She's got that. It's deep throat. It's deep throat. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Miss Bird said, I know, baby. I know. Well, y'all have told me some stuff tonight that I didn't know for sure. So no. I'm I, I'm I'm the good guy. Look, I'm innocent. I like. I didn't, like I'm, I didn't say you weren't the good guy. I said I want to put you in the hot seat. I want to see how good you really. Y'all don't y'all want to see me put Storm in the hot seat? Y'all vote on that. Y'all vote because I'm not gonna rehearse with Storm. I'm not gonna tell him what I'm gonna ask him. We're gonna just put this man in the hot seat. That's what I think we should do. Mm -hmm. What's that stuff called again? Deep throat. And look how Storm described it. And you got to put it all the way down. And, and no, then it no, got, he did the head with it. No, because that's like, a, I don't know what it's called, but it's a part of your throat if you can get the penis in. Like, it feels really good for the man because it simulates, um, well, it's going to simulate the part right under the head. It's hard to explain. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone. I don't know nothing. He knows. He knows you guys. And, you know, even when it went in between the throat, do it go between your tonsils? Y'all, he knows. Yeah, I'm listening. Okay, so I'm going to go. Y'all, they say, yeah, they want Essie to put you in a hot seat. Yeah, yeah, we want that. <laughs> they said the deal. What does got to do with me going to the DR? The what? Y'all, we just telling all the business tonight, ain't we? Ain't we though? Child, y'all gonna have me thinking about all that now. I'm like, what? The deep throat and Miss Bird just came out. I know what it is. I would love a sex education type of show though. You can't monetize that on YouTube though. Oh, you can't? Uh-uh, no. I would I would need a uh, a platform to pick that up. That, um, that, that, Jay, Jay that, said he got a few bottles of it. All right, Jay Lynn. Jay Lynn said I can have a few bottles of it. Well, what? What you say, Jay? I got a few bottles of deep throat. Well, okay. What flavor? You ask a woman, what flavor do you want to put on your throat? How does that go? Can I put that flavor on your throat? You want grape or you want strawberry? Oh, I can do cherry for you. Is that how that go? Let me just spray that deep throat in your mouth, girl. All right. What? Jay. Okay. And, and, and see, they got, they got that for the throat, just like they got poppers that you can take to open um your anus up. What? Yeah, so you take a popper and it basically takes the whole the hole from this and it just it it loosens and you can actually if you talk to gay men they say I you could literally stick a broomstick in there and it would be fine. What's the popper? Is a pill? What's the popper? What is it? Like what? Yeah, security pop. Did y'all know that? Only thing is, it can make you nauseous. It can make you sick, but it literally helps to loosen up so that the the bottom isn't like straining. They ain't because if you clench when you get pounded from the in the in the anus, you will tear. That's why they tell you don't clench. But anyway, I'm don't y'all know a whole lot about all this stuff right here. Don't y'all just don't let say we need to get some education about stuff right now. Y'all say don't clench, y'all. Y'all, if you went in there, y'all heard how he detailed it. Yeah, but don't you clench that. Yeah, okay, yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, my bad. It's a liquid. It's a liquid that you smell. It's a liquid. And it is what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you de you definitely gotta keep your stomach empty too. That's true. Look at Jay. Jay Lynn. What you is a man or woman? Because Jay said he got a couple bottles. Jay Lynn. Mm -hmm. Look at y'all. Y'all educate me today. It's a whole mess. Girl, don't we say say we learn something new every day? Girl, I just learned a whole lot new with the clenching and the deep throat and the smell of the butthole. I was like, what the hell? They got this new shit going on now, right? Like, back in the day, you don't even need no help. You just got smells and stuff. If you just open up, woo, child. What you say? <laughs> Ooh, they, oh, Jaylen say Google it. Jaylen, you better believe I'm finna Google everything I just learned tonight. I'm finna Google it. Jaylen say Google it and Google the flavor too. Yeah, he know the flavor. I'm gonna say grape, strawberry, cherry, vanilla. No, I, no I, cinnamon, I, pastry, <laughs> Twinkies, chocolate. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, y'all, y'all know y'all wanna put Storm on the high seat. Wouldn't y'all like to just? Just put them out because you you're very open, so I mean you're very honest, and you can tell you researched a lot of this. You know what I'm saying? Because I wouldn't knew none of that. You know what I'm saying? But Girl, you gotta I, understand, I'm I'm the type I would go get my degree in sexology. Like that's just like I'm interested in that kind of thing. So because it's because it's it's a it's a it's a being of who you are. You know it makes you you know what I'm saying it makes you want to study yourself more. I ain't mad at you. Stella so say he has sexuality. He he wants to study every being of that from I the mean, from the core I, to the nudie to the to, to the Rudy. Well, people yeah. keep forgetting I took a semester long course in college in human sexuality, just learning the man and woman's body alone. So is that they right? Said, they said we have seen Storm in those stores. Yeah, some of y'all have actually. Woo! I've been right up. So what you get? Do I need this? Or should I get this? Or do this, do this? I'll be like having them educate me in the store at that time. No, y'all didn't. They tell the lawyer business. They done seen Storm in the store. What was he buying, y'all? Well, <laughs> well, they know they either tell me buying condoms, they either tell me buying a pocket vagina, uh, maybe a, a head pocket. How we carry a vagina in his pocket? Yeah, yeah, it's like in a uh in a can like this. Um, or you can even get like something like this. This is a what's that? So this is called a got got three thousand. Oh my god, I can't believe I'm showing you that. Okay, what's the god got three thousand girl? Look, I just said all right. What's the got got three thousand? What's up with this? So it's supposed to actually simulate oral sex. So what you do is you're supposed to like fill this part here with lube, and then you insert the penis, and then you turn it on, and it spins two, three, four, and then five. And then what? And you use it until you finish. So oh, it so goes. So it's squeezing your little thing while you're doing that. Is that squeezing it? But it, it's spinning like this. Y'all yeah, ain't this a, a, a surrounded coochie? You got a plastic surrounded coochie now. What you say? So you put the lubrication in there. And it just y'all saw that. Yeah, but you 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 actually like you you want to put a lot in there, and then it gets like slop. It's a whole it's a whole mess. It's a whole thing. So, um, that boy's a super freak. Yeah, yeah. but the trick. I but the trick, before, but like the trick though is to heat your lube up just a little bit, like just a like you may even put it in a microwave just a few seconds and then it's warm, you're done. So y'all see what's that thing called, Storm? Y'all men. A Gok 3000. What is it? Gok. A Gok. It's a 3000. 3, a Gok. How much that cost, Storm? I, uh, I think that's like $69.95. I got it for free though. I bet you did. So I, so I, so I got it for free. He so he went into a store and he got some shit like that for free for $70. Mm -hmm. I got it for free. <laughs> I got it for free. Yeah, okay. I got it for free. Y'all said that they was, yeah, okay. What you said? Oh, thank you for my God 3000 Thank you, Miss Spirit Lynn. Oh, she sent me another hundred. Thank yeah. you. Hey, this this lit tonight for sure. 
Woo, baby. Woo. Oh, they said Storm Wazzy next to the computer. Okay, listen, you got to get it. Okay, listen. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, tell us the truth. Come on, come on. Why about the computer? Oh, my God. Okay. Did Let you me know tell <laughs> I would just say it's there because it's there, and I'll leave it there. It's there because I watch porn at nighttime, and I take my Guac 3000, and I sit up here on this internet on, um, they got some called Red Tube. Y'all try Red Tube. Red Tube, and I put my Guac 3000, and I let it do what it do, baby, right by the computer. You know what it do. Well, this ain't not being, oh, no, just throwing this little thing around. He putting it in the Guac. You know what I'm saying? He getting to the Guac 3000. Y'all so messy. Why you ask that man why, about, well, why was it by the computer? Because what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it looked kind of greasy then, didn't it, y'all? It's like, some already in there, Storm? So like, <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. No, no. <laughs> y'all, y'all need to let me put Storm on the hot seat, baby. Got walks in here. Woo! Not all your toys. And let's see, because I know if he got that, y'all know he got more toys. If he got I'm that. I'm a good who, guy. Who, who, I'm a good girl. I'm a good girl too. I'm, I'm a good and I'm guy. I'm a good girl. You know what I'm saying? I'm be like, hold up, nigga. I don't want to do this. Let me go get my guac for you. Come on. Yeah. Come on. I'm gonna hold it like that, nigga. You ain't got. You ain't got to touch me. Let me go get my guac three thousand. Come on, bro. Let's go. Yeah. You, you want more guac? Okay. Let me get some more of this. Little <laughs> do y'all know y'all ain't got to handle y'all business? Storm just gave y'all women a free way out with y'all man. Go get your Guac 3000. And whoever got this, we want some back pay for us advertising this Guac 3000 on here like this. Straight up, a Guac 3000. I bet you it is. You know, I always try to tell my mom, I, I, I always joke with my mom like I'm innocent, I'm a virgin. And she said, God gonna strike you down. You better stop <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. That's why you got the guac. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what was it by the computer? So I'm saying, I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth. I, I wanted it in. I wanted it in a location that I can get to it as fast as I could. That's all. No, no more. I just need to be able to reach it when I need to reach it. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I plead. I plead the fifth. For the night. They done tipped you another hundred dollars for showing the guac. They say educate us some more, baby. Guac three thousand. <laughs> Come on, Imani. What's you say? What's going on, Imani? 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 Uh, Hello? All right. Maybe she fell asleep. It happens. Imani don't want to show her face. She said, no, nah, this guac and this three and this thousand. Child, that's a good one right there. Y'all finna get all into it. Somebody to my the they, they said, what else, what, what else do I have? Oh, my God. Let's put them in a hot seat, y'all. Go get the whole bag. So we know you got a bag that's <laughs> like that. Look, have y'all ever seen something like that? I ain't never seen that like that. And call it the walk. It's like a, a, it's like a light holder, did it, with a, a bulb switch in it, didn't it? <laughs> that big ass hole. That's what it's like a bulb switch. Could you imagine? I want to see how the damn thing move now. Can, can, well, can we I'm. Can we go get a cucumber and we just see? Look, let me quit playing with you. <laughs> I'm going I to. I, I I do. Okay, so I have I have the gawk here. I have I have some cock rings. I just can't find them. What is that? Um, so you put them on like the base of the penis, or sometimes the penis and the balls, and it it keeps you hard. Like so, you can. It's what uh male strippers use so they can keep an erection while they're performing. You got strapped that on your weenie. Yeah, but you you have to get yourself. Typically, you use a penis pump, get yourself hard, and then you hold you trap the blood in by using the uh, the cock ring. But sometimes you can get a cock ring that vibrates, and then that's pleasurable to the woman. It, it's a whole thing. I can't find my cock rings though. I have a penis pump, but I'm getting a new pump. I don't like that pump. I'm getting a new pump. Um, you use the pump? Just cause you can use it. Um, it maximizes your erection. So like. As the dude, like you know your penis, and then like you pumping, and you like, oh no, that's the real penis right there. Like that's that's the hell. But you know, I take my sea moss, I got my l citrulline, I got my nitric oxide, so ain't no erection problems over here, thank God. But but you just want to try out and see what it do. Like um, you know, sometimes when I'm going to certain places, I want to make sure I'm good for the night. 
what kind of place is going? <laughs> Strip bars, titty bars, escort bars, like what places? Uh, um, you know, certain parties. I'll just put it that. Oh Lord, the viper is the viper is me fifty dollars now. Thank, thank you so much. A certain, yeah. certain, certain parties um or meetups, yeah. Certain parties. Mm -hmm. They like um orgies. You been to not, orgy? not always. But you been to orgy before? Oh yeah, oh yeah. So I said it was like doing shit. Oh yeah, yeah, yes, I yes. Should I fifty three? Eh? Yes, I've been to orgy. Yes, 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 yes. Was it was it surprising? Was you shocked? Was you scared? Um, no, actually, I've never felt more at home than in an orgy. Like, believe it or not, like going to sex clubs, I feel like it's my like I could open one up. Like, I feel oh, I'm like, oh, this is my kind of thing because it's like I feel like I have better conversations with people while we're butt ass naked. It's weird, but yeah, anyway. we all the way naked. Yeah, okay, so typically it depends on every club has different rules, but typically you have like the front side of the club, which is more like a bar, you know, they have a couple stripper poles. Some of them have catered food. Um, they typically don't have bartenders because they don't have liquor licenses, but you bring your own liquor and they will pour it for you. That kind of a thing. That's how they skirt around that. Um, but yeah, the, the front part is more like the socialize. And then when you go to the back, that's where the freak stuff go down. But different places have different rules so sometimes it's once you come to the sex part you typically have to strip down now some let you wear your drawers some will only let you wear like a towel and then some of them is like it's nothing but typically a towel uh for sanitation reasons they don't want the germs from your outside clothes coming in to the sex part and then they got the showers there for you so you shower and it's it, it, it's a thing. So everybody back there just getting busy. Not that's not like you would think. Honestly, most of the time people are just socializing and talking. And naked. But yeah, but naked though. Yeah. Yeah. And they just talking. Yeah, a lot of times. Yeah. It's just like with strippers, like you would think they doing freaky shit in the VIP room, but a lot of times dudes just want conversation. Naked. But naked, yes. What you say? They pay for that shit, y'all. Y'all, hey, y'all want to sit butt naked and not talk to you? Bring your ass on. If that's all it takes, come on, baby. Who first? Yeah, okay, let's do this. Come on, boo. You need to get in front of this camera. Then we can do this. Then that's all you want the conversation, you butt naked? <laughs> really? Is that right? Oh, my goodness. No, oh, okay. Don't disrespect Etsy like that now. Thank you for that donation. But what they said? They said MSSC will rock your world if you guys want to ever hook up. Y'all need to quit. Thank you for your yeah, donation. Yeah, you know you should be shaving that right there. You know you should be shaved. That's why your mind in the gutter right now. But thank you for that little tip, though. We really appreciate that tip. Thank you for the tip, tip, though. They yeah, said, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, pretty much all the dudes is on some form of Viagra, whether it's Viagra, Cialis, Honey Packets, uh, Camagro, um, some kind of performing enhancement. You know, all of them. You pretty much. Yeah, Pretty much all the dudes because the club opens like around 10 and it closes between three to four, and they want to be able to last throughout the night. Look at still telling all the business. And he said Gargaga, Kakula, Kalala, so all them different names of pills for Viagra. Yeah, so you got Viagra, which like that starts to work within 30 minutes to an hour. You got Cialis, which will cover you, I think it's like 36 hours. And then it's another form I just can't remember. You got Blue Chew, which is just a smaller version of Viagra. You got the little honey packets that people buy out, like the liquor stores, the ghetto shops, stuff like that. Um, uh, Camagro comes directly from China. The best ones you got to get out of the Chinese shop. You just you got to know what to look for. Uh, then you got Black Horse. That works really well, too. Black Horse. They said, I remember when Storm was a born again virgin. You know oh, what? Well, girl, I'm one now. We good. I'm, I'm, I'm taking what Storm left off. I'm two years into the game right now, and I'm good with it. It got to be right for me to even come that way at all. So I ain't mad at you. Now, you said the horse. What was the name of the horseman? Oh, the black horse. 
and what's the is a black pill? It's just called black horse. So they do have it in pill version, but it's it's normally a honey, like it's in a packet and it's it's honey. So y'all know I knew a dude, not like that, not that a friend of my cousin, he had took Viagra and he had got guess got heart and he almost had a heart attack because the dingling ain't gonna go down. See, that's what it, you gotta be careful about. So I don't know why it wouldn't go down, but he almost had a heart attack because it wouldn't go down. So, like when he said said 36 hours. So you gonna walk around 36 hours for a pill? Uh -uh. No, no. So you're not hard for 36 hours, but oh, it, okay. it's like a slow release in your system. So basically, anytime you get aroused, you're ready. So it's really for like dudes when they go like um on vacation with their wives. That's typically what they'll take that for. Yeah, or if or if they're going out of town with their boys and they don't know when action is gonna happen, and they just want to be ready for any time something pop off. So so you took one to go. Uh huh. <laughs> I just wonder, have you ever took one? I know you probably tried to see how it would do. Did you try to see what it would do? Not Cialis, no. Uh, not Viagra, no. You need a prescription for that. But I've I've tried a couple of them. Mm -hmm. I bet you is to try a couple of them. Back there in that back club, back there. All right. Uh, ain't nothing wrong with that, though. You know what I'm saying? At least, you know, like, when he's explaining that, like, you know. You know, some people, like, some of the shit you, I ain't know nothing you just told me. All this is new to me. I'm just prone to the fact. Like, I, the Viagra, I heard about that a little bit. But the rest of that, the, the little cup with the bulb on it and all that extra stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And the orgies. Now, I see orgies on TV, but then meet somebody who would have been in the orgy. Mm -hmm. Back then, the room just talking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's not. It's not like you think though, but it can be. It it just it just depends. If everybody's down, then yeah, but you you sometimes like people come and it's like, okay, the man wants to do this, but the woman doesn't, or the woman wants to do this and the man doesn't. Um, you got orgies, you got game bang strains, like whatever you're into. Um well, which party did you go to? Which one was you into? I've seen it all. Really? I, I've seen it all. I'm trying to think. Have I seen? No. Yes, because at Tokyo Valentino in Atlanta, straight and gay people go there. So, yes, I've, I've pretty much seen it all, except I ain't never seen, like, dudes run train on the dude, I don't think. I don't think I've never seen that. Has you seen the men do the women and all that? But I, Yeah, yeah. But I've seen, like, two dudes go at it. Yeah, at Tokyo, absolutely. Because it's out in the open. So they out in the middle of nowhere, out in the middle of the club, like in the area. What you saying? Out in the open. Well, they they have like beds, they have different couches, they have booths, they have like um uh glory holes, they have open rooms. Um, What's the things where they, where they chain you up. What's a glory hole? Well, it it, it okay. It's different types. Oh, well. If it's a hole, you stick your penis in, and then somebody gonna take care of it. I saw that before. What now? That's now, glory hole. Now, sometimes you cannot see on the other side at all, and then sometimes it's big enough for you to look and see who went there. So, y'all, are y'all take are y'all writing all this down for the ones who still are? Uh, is you writing this down? This part be a one time event, right? About now, is you writing everything down? You got the glory hole. They said pretty much like um, the movie, the Tom Cruise movie, Eyes Wide Shut. Let me tell y'all about that. There's a mansion an hour and a half north of Atlanta that a lot of your senators and high profile people go to. I can't tell you who. I'm just going to tell y'all what it is. So when you, you have to be invited, they only do this on Saturday nights. They pick certain nights out the month. All right. When you go. You have a doorman that meets you at the door. You have like a door before the door, right? Doorman meets you at the door. You give a certain code. Then you come in, you have another door. But in this area, you have like a coat room, locker room, all that stuff. You're given a ticket of some sort or wristband. I can't remember. But basically, they put like a masquerade thing over your eyes and they take all your clothes right there. So ain't no walking around with no towel, nothing. You butt naked the whole time. But everybody is. Except the mask. Except the mask. Except the masquerade mask. Yes. If you want to wear that, if you don't, then whatever. But everything is true because they're making sure you ain't bringing in no kind of device, nothing. No recording, nothing. 
So they take all your clothes, they put everything up, all your possessions away, and they're holding on to your phone, no Apple Watch, no nothing. What? And then after that, you can proceed in, and different rooms are going to have whatever you're into. So you have boy, girl, you know, the normal type sex. You might have boy, boy, girl, 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 girl boy, 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 like whatever you're into. But the best fucking food you can believe, catered very well, swimming pool at the bottom, like in the basement, whole thing, jacuzzis, the whole, like, and that's what a lot of your officials, judges, senators, y'all got to remember, these people compete when it comes to their job, but they all friends behind the scenes. That's right. That's right. So you may be in court thinking, you saying, your these attorneys go at it, and they go at it, and that's their job. But the attorneys and the judge on Saturday night, oh, they 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 getting their freak on. And he telling the truth about that, you guys, because I went to one. I didn't get past the front door because when I seen all when I peed like this and I seen all the police cars out there and just seen and there was so many white folks up in there, I was like, nah, I don't I don't think that was for me. Cause I I mean, they be up in there, judges, lawyers, teachers, whoever, doctors, you probably find anybody up in there you want. So I can't I say nothing. I can't, I can't say nothing about Candy's alleged sex dungeon, but what I can tell y'all is that there is an okay, underground. She looked uh, like the girl's got a dungeon. Exactly. There Free. is a there is an underground Atlanta sex. I don't want to call it a sex ring, but it's like a lot of your famous Atlanta celebrities back in the day. They, just know they real cool for a reason, and I'm gonna leave it at that. Y'all hear this? So it's a ring. It's a whole look because the thing you go through and then you can pick whatever you want to do. Ain't that something? Mm. And, I'm, and I'm going to tell y'all something else, you know. Tell us, tell us, because I sure want to know. It's ladies night and I'm feeling right. It's ladies night. Oh. Oh, yes, it's ladies night. That, ain't no, that wasn't nothing but a munch fest, but y'all ain't heard that from me. Okay. Leave that alone. What? A munch fest like women doing women? Licking women? Oh, yeah. Okay. What ladies' night? Now see, that's that's why see all these different clubs. Now see, that's an underground club, and so you know they're doing more than just that. You guys, come on! So how many times did you go store to the underground club? <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go to I, I didn't go to nothing under uh, underground per se, but I, I will. Let me tell y'all this story here while we get it. Yeah, yeah, tell them. And I can't tell y'all who, who I told it from, but there are these are two female actresses. One is married to one of the biggest actors in the world, and y'all make fun of him for what he let his wife do. This wife shaved her head bald, etc. <gasps> okay. Right. okay. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I, I didn't say no name. I'm just okay, saying. Okay, okay. So the wife of this very famous actor who is an actress herself with a bald head. She was in a club one day and another actress who I'm not sure if she's won an Oscar, but let's just say she's never confirmed her sexuality, but people know she's a lesbian. Oh, did I tell y'all already? Well, let, well, let's just say one is very short and one is very tall and stocky. And the tall one at a party in front of everybody when they were drunk, jumped under the table and ate the small one out. The big one ate the small one out in front of everybody. Is that right? And this was an industry party? This was an industry party. I said one of those famous people. They white and black. Oh, they black. Y'all know who this is. But the bigger one ain't the smaller one. Mm. So that's all I'm gonna say. I've been, I can officially say I've been to one industry party. I know I lied and I got in the Usher and Jimmy I Bean Interscope party. Hung out with Chris Brown, Floyd Mayweather, Tiana Taylor, Swiss Beats, Megan Good, Diddy's Kids, Young Miami, can't the Real Housewives people, all that, right? I can see it. I, I, I'm not cool with Tasha Kane. Yeah. I can see it. We can say it. Swiss, Swiss, Swiss Beats went up to this publicist, allegedly, and said to her, I'm trying to eat that tonight. 
Swiss. Did he eat? Did he get full? Did he have that? Tweet it. And Alicia wasn't there. Swiss. I Hold up. What's going on? What's going on, Jay Lynn? Jay Lynn had to hop on there after all the because he know all the flavors. Let's see if Jay Lynn a man or a woman. What's one, Jay? First of all, um, this is my first time coming out on Storms Live and Storm Chasers. Good evening. Um, Storm, thank you for such a wonderful channel. You're doing su such an amazing job. Thank you. Miss Essie. It's a pleasure to meet you. I just subscribe to your channel. You're a beautiful woman. I'm not going to stay here too long, but I just wanted to say I want to commend both of you. Like, hi, everybody. I just want both of you to know that you two work together. Like, y'all blend each other out. Like, y'all just feed uh -huh. off of each other. Y'all just treat each other so well, so respectable. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and oh, where's Miss Love Jones? Where she's at? Where's the cutie at? Oh, and um, by the way, I'm in New York. Where is she? <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stalk you, love. <laughs> you walk in the house. Yes, 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 yes. But um, just want to say, keep doing what you're doing, Storm. You're gonna get there. I saw an old video of yours. And you come in a long, long way. You're a good person inside and out. And it reflects in your chat. Because I see it go crazy all the time. And I and I sit in the bushes a very, very long time. Yes, it's entertaining. You speak so well. You know, the Wonder Bread, you just be having me hollering in, in here <laughs> in the house. The dog goes crazy when he hears you because I just be here just, just, you're amazing. Keep doing what you're doing. God is going to take care of you. Miss Essie, oh, Miss Essie, Miss Essie, Miss Essie, every single time I see you, every single time I see you, my heart just pours out to you guys. And Mr. Hot Seat, come here. I, I'm 51. You know, I could be your cougar. If the ladies in the chat put one in the chat, the man is gorgeous. I don't care what nobody says. Yes. You are. You cute. Like you so are <laughs> gorgeous. Just these I women ain't mean, these women ain't in here. Yeah, call me auntie, call me whatever you want. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, I listen, I, I don't date younger men, I never did, but you I will make an exception. Ooh, and all that and all that hotness that was coming out of your mouth. When he popped up, it. I was like, what that toy doing on that side of the computer? I said, oh, yeah, USB port like mine. All I'm going to say, Jay Lynn, is just make sure you're flexible. Sweetheart, I'll put you in a press suit. I will put you in every single position you never thought of. Okay? Don't yeah. play with me. They Don't play you with me. <laughs> you can get all this though. Man, listen. <laughs> let me tell you. Mm, don't ever underestimate your partner. No, 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 no. We don't charge batteries. You get toys with USB ports. Hello. Now, batteries is like the 1950s. We in 2023. Let's go. And Miss Essie, I'm going to email you. I'm going to send you some stories. I'm going to I'm going to keep you up on your game. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna what teach you. Okay? What, what game you gonna give me? Psst, whatever you want, however you want. Okay, you okay let me let me see what we talk about here, Miss J. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna okay? So if she ready to put you up on game two, you ready, Storm, with a big job? Look how he's cheesing, y'all. That is says, hilarious. He, listen. A little bit. Then she, she said she want to use her 3000 on you. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Yes, oh, Jackson. you want to know what I look like? Let me turn on my camera. Hold on. Let me turn on the light. Hold on. Matter, matter of fact, hold on. I'll come out. Hold on. Let me let me let my let me let me let me let me let my hair down. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Because I had I had my I had my hair up to uh, hold on, girl. Listen, hold on. How do I get Oh, she clicked herself off. Jay, hey, she just fake. She probably, she pretty much said, Storm, you can get it, though. Y'all, you can get I like the accent. Storm, Jay said you can get it, though. Come on, Jay, show up when we work with it. Storm, Storm be on plane tomorrow. So what was this kid? We put you on plane tomorrow, Storm. This just, hey, this this is what it is right now. Let's get it going. Uh, hey, hey. What's, what's, what's going on, on, Trina White? <laughs> Come on, Trina. Hello. Hi, Trina. How are y'all doing tonight? Good. How you doing? Good, good. Um, I just want to tap in real quick. I just want to give you y'all's flowers. One, I've heard a lot about just the industry stuff, just what goes on behind the scenes, everything. Since I was a kid and to get like to my age, I'm only 24. So to get to this age now and y'all, everything's being exposed you know, nothing's been able to be hidden anymore. Everyone has phones, social media, all that. It's just wild. It's mind blowing every day. But it also confirms some other stuff because even down to Steve Harvey, whatever, it's wild because when I was younger watching him, I never, none of his information ever resonated with me, even as a kid, just like going into his stuff, watching his shows and whatnot. And now that I'm starting to get more into this stuff and y'all talk about it all the time, it makes sense. Like if you, if you know, you know, whatever you know if it's not right your spirit will not align with it so i also just say that just to tell people like pay attention to the feeling and the energy you're receiving off of some people's words and whatnot because yes. it's a lot like there is so many things that i did not like didn't agree with um it wasn't that i had a problem with it i just it just didn't resonate with me i didn't i was like okay whatever everyone's going crazy i remember steve harvey had a very big like not like a blow up moment, but just everyone was just Steve Harvey. Like he was on show, he was on, he had his game shows. He had his uh, little snippets on Instagram. Like he was just kind of blown up um, a little bit before the other guy that passed away. I can't remember his name. Bernie Mac. But yeah, just- Bernie Mac, yes. No, not Bernie Mac. It was, it's way sooner. Uh, Kevin Samuels, something. Kevin Samuels, okay. I think something like that, but just- He's another example, like I would hear information about him or see his videos and how he would try to give information to women and shut them down in a heartbeat. That was something I didn't like about Steve. Whenever I'd watch his shows and you know, women would put their hands up trying to ask questions and get advice on how to save their marriage or relationship advice or whatever, whatever, they'd get two words into the question or two words into explaining their side. And he'd like, see, and that's why you're single now or that's why you're struggling now. And all that, it's just like, whoa, like talk to them like a human being. So like, if he's doing that, in front of in the whole audience in a studio with production i can only imagine what's going on behind doors with the woman that he claims to love or whatever else anybody anybody true. so thank you I just, hey, thank you trina for coming up for sure but also miss essie i give you your flowers happy you're able to tell your story storm thank you for everything i have a good night absolutely thank good you. Night. i appreciate that trina What's going on? Jalen put a uh, camera on. <laughs> I, I have nothing to hide. I just have to be careful. I just realized, you know, like this is the internet and like whatever is here. Let me. Oh, here we go. There Everything go. that's yeah. out here, you know, it's like it's it's out here. But um, you like my job. <laughs> Not it's too late. Anyway. We ain't gonna say nothing crazy. We ain't, we ain't gonna say nothing crazy. But we see, we see you, Jay. Jay said I gotta put on my my camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had to bring my hair down because I had it in the in the ponytail. So yeah. Um. <laughs> you can pull it a little bit. You can hold on to wait, that hair a little bit. Wait, 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 I, I'm I, I'm looking at. I'm trying to fix it. I was trying to fix it. Um, he, he yeah. I was trying to fix Brooklyn ain't playing. She ain't playing, is she, y'all? She ain't playing. She ain't playing. You can get it, though, Storm. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put this match back in. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hi. Come on, y'all. 
You're beautiful. Hi, everybody. Beautiful. Everybody, everybody is so sweet. Oh, yeah, I, I will come out on cam because I stream someplace else. So I'm not afraid of the camera. And, okay. and college taught me that when I did um speech. So, you know, I know how to, you know, I'm a people person. I love people. I love, you know, your your channel I found by accident. Um, I think I was watching some celebrity stuff with you and, and you just, you was dragging Kim Kardashian and I was like, you were on the couch. I saw your, I saw your date with, um, Love Jones. It was beautiful. You treated her like such a lady that she is. She's amazing. I love Thank her. You. And like your, your, your mods are amazing. Everybody that's in the chat like everybody they cracked me up like the chat they just because you have 1.7 people no 2,000 almost 3,000 people and it's like everybody just gravitates to you and I and I see why Miss Essie's here like why you know but anyway it, um, it, as it, far it, as Essie is dope, for sure. I see why you here too, Miss J. I see you. I see why you here too. I see. Well, I'm, well, I'm gonna say this. Don't don't say nothing too crazy now on, on camera. But you can hit me in the DM. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Woo! Hit me in the DM. <laughs> you can get it though. Be flexible. Ooh, I got this. Made a match. You, you know, see this? Yeah. What? You know what? I'm looking at the. At, I gotta stop looking at the computer because um, yeah, yeah, I'm looking yeah. at everybody. I'll I'll do the replay. What it is um, for your topic with Steve Harvey? I totally boycotted them. Um, I have watched two other commentators, and um, now I found Miss Essie with you. Like I followed you, and I wasn't surprised what was going on today because like i'm 51 so i've seen him for a very long time and i really didn't find him funny but when COVID hit and he had gave his supposedly his heart to christ like he got baptized and you know but then what made me look it up was when jordan michael b jordan came out that he broke up with Lori, I was like, what's going on? And yeah. then I found out Marjorie had the drug kingpin and all of that was going on. Allegedly, like all this stuff was coming out. But then when Mary said, <laughs> <laughs> well, Mary said, so it was like, you know, um, and it's a generation thing also, because um, the millenniums don't really know, like Storm knows a lot for being a millennium for me. I think he's a millennium, but he knows a lot. He knows his stuff because you got to read everything and not everything is true, but you got to bring receipts. And that's what you two doing. That's, the, that's what it is. Cause that's why everybody's like, so like other commentators, like when they taking out the information they're not really showing it, you know, they are really going to try to hide this, but they can't. Right. Cause the internet is huge. Yes. You know, they try to clean it. They try to take, they try to clean out everything cause someone lost their channel because they, they had Kevin Samuels in their videos. He lost it for a week and he had to remove all the videos and got his channel back. Mm. So that's what I'm saying, because they're trying to wipe out Kevin. So I've honestly never saw him. I never spoke. I never seen. I've heard. But another thing what everybody needs to realize is, like Storm said, you can hear what's going on, right? You have. You can take out. You can X out of the channel. And me, I X out. And I put no longer interested. If I can block them, I block them. Yeah. That's that's I control my content, what I want to watch. So um I'm gonna become a member. I'm gonna go into 
What's the other platform? You got to teach me, teach me this stuff. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got to you got to teach me what this gaslighting is, what this red pill is, because you know what? I have oh, no education. Yeah. I have no education whatsoever on any of this language. When they're talking, I'm like, what? Huh? Oh yeah, I can explain to you. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the blue pill, the red pill, black pill. Okay. You see me? I'm nose. I'm like, what? Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. You see, Essie, when he speaks sexually, I know what he's talking about because I learned when I was younger than than Storm. I, right. I educated myself. Right. So it's like when 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 you're speaking to people, you got to know what you're talking about. Correct. You got to know how to address what you want no matter what it is when you're trying to you know interact with the internet you got to have like the tongue the lingo the gift of, of gab which storm sure. got right <laughs> what storm has sure. but you know what it is also he has he honesty has that's that's what keeps it going that's what keeps everybody going your honesty you have to be honest remember 95 percent of the of the internet is nothing but lies. It sure is. Does that nobody don't that care about you? Nobody don't care where you come from. That's a fact. You and you get what I'm saying? So it is you just gotta respect yourself. And if you that's why you survive, because you respect everybody around you. Yeah. You treat us yeah. as your equal. You don't treat treat us like you better than us. Or you think below us. You treat us just the same. And you know what? And I commend you how you treat your mom. I I I commend you. I commend you. Because you know what? A lot of men are, at your age, this age, they don't have that respect. Mm. They don't they don't know how to address the public. You know, you're not hey yo, yo, you know. She basically said you sexy. That's sexy. That's sexy right there. Know how to treat your mama because they say whatever you treat your mama is how you're going to treat your woman. That's why Jay's sitting here right now. I see it, Jay. <laughs> I see all this well, I'm, oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to tell you right now, I never had children and I've never been married because oh. I, I, how I found you, I work from five in the morning and sometimes to eight o'clock at night. Like I work all day. Um, I just stopped like three weeks ago. I was like, I got to slow down. And the thing is, is that people be like, why you didn't have children? Because I wasn't ready. But by the time I was ready, I forgot. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I forgot. Because they like, oh, you're going to be 50 years old and you're going to die with a dog. No problem. I got my pooch right there. It's okay. Hey, 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 dogs are pretty loyal. Uh yeah, this 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 troll there. said this troll said, How about how you treat your father? I treat my father how he treat me. And then well, see, oh, um Blackberry said, next call up. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you're uh, but what's the matter, Blackberry? You don't want to come up. <laughs> <laughs> What you say, Nancy? You're just so cute, and you're adorable as you can be. You know. Thank you so much. But um, I, I like I said, thank you guys so much, both of you. It's, it, I don't want your your little storm chasers to run out. Um, uh, you keeping me up past my bedtime. You know, you know, I need my beauty sleep. Okay, I'm up okay. here. I'm up here hollering like the lollipop. I like that too. I like, that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jay, for coming up. All right. Jay, hit him up in the DM, though. Jay, hit him up in that DM. <laughs> Keep your head out. Hit him up in that DM. We be off in a minute, Jay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My hair down. Put on that sweet perfume. Storm, I want to talk to you. Yeah. She was ready, wasn't she, y'all? I love it. Oh. This has been good, Storm. Just this was fun. It all out tonight. Just let it all out. The perfume, the 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 three thousands and the the orgy rooms and you know just the whole the black pill, the green pill, the blue pill, the suckers and the tuckers, the, <laughs> the flavors, and baby, baby, woo. Shout all right, we're we, we, we gonna take these last two callers real quick. Imani, hello, 
Can you hear me? Yes, yes. ma'am. Okay. I do have one question. Hi, you guys. But um, do you know if Lori Harvey relationship is just, just PR or they're actually paying her or just, just for her image? Lori and uh, Damson? Yeah, uh, all her relationships. Are they all PR, including Damson? I, I think some of them PR. I think so. I think some of them, I some of them are PR, too. Um, yeah. I think Lori's going to try to climb that ladder, get the richest man she can have. And then that's when she gonna stop. She had it with Michael Jordan for whatever reason, but she just one of one of them diggers who climbed herself. She trying to dig her way to the top. You know what I'm yep. saying? She's running from her mother. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But anytime you see celebrities, have y'all noticed they always be snapping pictures? Don't like give a damn about them pictures, but they always snapping pictures trying to show, oh, I'm with him. A lot of that is not face value. A lot of that is fronting and PR work, as you said. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. And I'm sorry, one more last question. Um, question. Um, they also said that Lori got pregnant at 15. Is that true? Was she? What time? Oh. Was what, what? How old was she when she was with that soccer player? Who was oh, she that was guy? 18 with him. She was 18 with him. Okay, so now I know that to be true because Winter told Mary. So it was a lie. We gonna go get Winter, and then that's one reason why they broke up. Now she was pregnant before then. I'm not sure of that, but if I'm not mistaken, did Steve adopt them by that time? And if she did get pregnant, who baby was it? Mm. Oh. Okay. Thank you, Imani. You have a good night. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my God. Oh. Yeah, that's a good one, ain't it? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on over to Storm Place. Come on, y'all. Right. Oh, it's always up. my turn. Hi. Hey. Hi, Queen. Hey there, Miss Barry. I've been watching you since Geneva's Closet, honey. I love you. Oh, love for you. you so much, yes, ma'am. So, Pretty much, I'm 30. My birthday, like, a month after Storms. But I kind of always felt a little bit fishy about Steve. Growing up, he had the Steve Harvey show. And I don't know if you remember, he had the one young man on the, his, his name was Bullethead. But then remember how Romeo's character died in real life? Yeah. With a bullet to the head? So it's just always been a lot of fishy, ishy stuff going on for me. I started my awakening journey when I was about 15. And it's just kind of been... Um, a little bit more of an alleviation now that the world, the veil is lifted, you know? Yes. So my question to you is, do you feel like you have become a targeted individual? I understand because of Mary, of course. But do you feel like you already were meant to be a targeted individual just because of your ex-husband being rerun? You've been around a lot of stuff in the industry, whether you've seen or heard or, you know, whatever. Do you think they kind of already had a target on your back and then dealing with Mary just amplified it? I'm going to be honest with you. Until I started... Whoa, certain, I, uh, no, I'm, I'm talking to the dog. Y'all go ahead. Um, there were certain things that I feel like was I was already targeted for in the beginning because certain things were going on with Rerun and y'all going to get ready to find them out because I'm working on some people with a documentary about him. So mm -hmm. I definitely like I'm a target. I definitely felt like I was a target when people found out I was a civil rights activist. But 100% beyond a shadow of a doubt, I am a target because I chose Steve Harvey and I spit him out and I exposed him. And that was something that the industry are not used to you doing. See, everybody, anybody can repeat something on videos and go from, you don't never see me repeating nothing on a video. We bring face value. We bring right. evidence. So I think me coming out with Steve, it made me a straight target for everybody who's in his circle for the industry. Because if I speak up, then that me looks bad on the network. But the network shouldn't have crooked people in the industry working for them. So yes, man, 100%. I've been a target for a long time. And at least for the last, since 27, 1% for sure. Really 2013, but 2017 up until now, I saw me being a definite target as far as this whole thing is concerned. Yes, ma'am. My second question, do you feel like, because you know how the industry is, once they no longer need you to get rid of you, or they kind of make you fold on your own, like a, like a lawn chair. Right. Do you feel like he has ran his course and now things are starting to crumble upon him and that's why his secrets are coming out, whether you tell it or not? whether a publicist tells it, whether an old coworker of his tells it, do you think that they're starting to get rid of him because they're sick of him? I think they've been sick of him a long time ago. A lot of his shows he lost was because of me, because I sent the child abuse papers and I sent other documents as well. But I noticed there's something about the industry. 
they will only let you get to a certain level. And when you start smelling yourself, then they got to bring you back down to the level that you should be on. So I feel like that's some of what Steve Harvey is doing. But if we continue to make a voice for ourselves and spread what he's really doing, I believe they're going to get tired of him and throw him on out anyway, because he's really not that important. Us as black people are the ones who put Steve Harvey where he is right now. And he forgot that. And I was mm. very when somebody said he was a minister. So if he was a minister, he should have cleared this up a long time ago. So the industry is work about worried about making money. They don't care about who he step on along the way. But it's people like you, people like Storm, Geneva, we can stop that and make a change. Because I do notice in 2017, when I came out with all this stuff about Steve Harvey, when nobody said nothing about celebrities, it was almost like I broke that mold. And when I started spitting out Steve Harvey, go back before 2017. Mm -hmm. Didn't nobody talk about celebrities like we talk about celebrities now. Didn't nobody bring them out to the forefront because they were too scared. But they're humans just like us. So yes. I think there's a way that the networks keep them going on to make money. But when they're tired of them and we keep kind of coming out, they're going to get rid of you. They ain't going to let black folks get but to a certain level. Then they get exactly. down to that certain level. So exactly. I like that things didn't resonate with you because that tells me that you're in line with the spirit of who you are, spirituality, that you know when something's negative and it don't align with you, you know how to walk away. And I'm so sick of him with them, with them folk behind suits on because just because you wear the pastor, reverend, slew foot suits don't mean you a minister. And he always tried to talk like he was just so godly, so heaven sent. But the actions never match with the words, the multiple marriages, the kids, the way he treats the kids, the way they're so distant, even even down to when he wrote the book, Think Like a Man. A lot of the concept of think like a man yeah. is not the way a woman should be thinking. And it's not the way a man should be dealing with a woman. Correct. But yet it's a top seller and it's selling bullshit. Part of my language, but it's selling it. Yeah. So at this point, we need to just start weeding out all of the drama, weeding out all of the negativity, because it ain't bringing us nothing but more drama, more negativity. And we're killing each other off and we're doing a job for them. Right. True. And I'm sick of it. Thank you, Queen Luxurious. You have a good night. All right. Yeah, you welcome. Good night. Good night. This has been fun, Essie. I do. I got to get up and I got to take the dog out. We've been on her phone. We did four hours. Oh, and entertained the whole time, and they stayed up on this live with us. I thank you guys so much for listening, joining me in Storm. Everything I said is never what I say. It's always what we can prove. We brought it to you at face value. We'll be back on here again. Hopefully put Storm yes. on a hot seat pretty soon, because this was hot in here tonight, baby. I want to get an honor with it. I'm sure Jay do, too. But Storm, I love you so much for you. opening your platform to me, coming to me. I thank you for all the comments that you share with me. I am on your platform because I know that you're one of the sent and you're honest. And that's why you guys don't see me on a lot of platforms because a lot of people ain't honest. They just leak it off other people, but they don't bring face value. Storm ain't scared and he ain't a coward. And that's what makes him a good blogger and a good interviewer. Point blank and simple. And y'all gonna go me some gizzards and some fried chicken right now with some hot Ooh. sauce. Yeah, y'all finna get it now. I'm finna get it. Four hours, y'all know I'm home you sitting up here. Oh, so so good. Good night. God bless you so much. Thank you. Same to you. God bless. I will comment and go back. Sometimes y'all see me in the comments. I'll go back and address some more of the comments. But for everyone who came on, I thank you guys so much and I appreciate you. God bless y'all and good night. Good night, Esty. All right. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. What's that? Y'all see that pillow? Right? Oh, okay. Y'all kind of see the pillow. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. You know, we had some technical difficulties. Core broke on the camera, but we made it work with the webcam. Um, I will see you guys soon. I got one, two, three, three interviews that's dropping in the next week and a half. Then a surprise one coming after that. So we got some good stuff coming uh, for September. I'll catch you guys later.